This is an introduction to Amazon uh, coding course. What we're gonna do in this course is to create an e-commerce website using vanilla JavaScript. Let's review the screens we're gonna build one by one. The first screen is the home page. And as you see, you will learn the static web page design, CSS grid to create header, footer, and content section. You will learn Flexbox to shape products thumbnail like this and make them responsive. I mean, if you go to inspect at this address and click on mobile view and refresh, as you see, it's gonna be like mobile for iPad or let's say for iPhone, it's gonna show only one item. Also, you will learn how to create a sidebar using pure JavaScript like this, and also a search box to search for products. The next screen we're gonna build together is product details screen. Let's go to details of a product. And here you will learn single page application design. So you will learn the routing system, how to create a route, let's say slash product slash ID of that product. The next thing you're gonna learn in the product screen is creating buttons like this, add to cart button and add event to it. When you click on it, you will be redirected to cart screen and the ID of that product is gonna be part of this URL. And by having that, it's gonna be added to the list of your shopping cart. In the shopping cart screen, you will learn how to save and retrieve data in local storage. Let's say if I make it like five and then go to other page and then click on cart again, it's gonna be saved here. Even if you refresh the page because your data are saved in the local storage, you will have your data even if you close it and open it again. Also, you will learn how to add event to combo box and update your page based on new value for items. When you click on proceed to check out, you will be redirected to sign in and register screen. So you'll be able to design a form like this, create an account for user, and also to authenticate a user. What you will learn in these two screens is to create dynamic form, validation user input. Let's say if I enter register, I need to fill this one. The validation message should be up here, here. Also, you will create a very simple Node.js web server and connect to MongoDB database and insert your registered user into the MongoDB database collection. Also, you will be able to use JSON web token to authenticate and authorize users in your e-commerce website. After implementing sign-in and register screen, you will be redirected to a wizard to place your order. In the shipping screen and in the payment screen, you will learn how to create wizard form to get user data in multiple steps. Also, you'll be able to save user info in local storage. In the place order screen, you will learn validation and also creating an order in the backend. By clicking on place order, you'll be redirected to order details. In the order details, you will learn how to make the payment using PayPal checkout. And when you click on it, you'll be redirected to the PayPal screen for make the payment and after successful payment, you're gonna be redirected automatically to the e-commerce website and finish the payment. The next screen we're gonna talk about is the profile screen. When you click on your name, 
you will see your profile screen comprises of two parts. The first section is about uh, updating user profile and it's a form for update your information and also log out. By clicking on log out, your local storage is gonna be cleared. And by clicking update your local storage and also your backend database is gonna be updated based on new information that you put here. Also, there is another section to show a history of your orders and it's possible for you to see your order history and take actions if you want to make the payment or you want to get the details about an order. Great. That's all about the user point of view. Let's go for the admin section. There is a dashboard link that will be appear only for admin user. If you click on it, you will be redirected to a dashboard screen. In the dashboard screen, you will be able to create professional dashboard using pure CSS and JavaScript. Also, you can use chart libraries to show sales information and categories of your products in your e-commerce website. The next screen is gonna be orders and it's just for admin to take an actions for orders. Let's say delete an order like this or edit an order and for edit an order it's possible for you to set an order as finished or completed or delivered if its state is paid and the last section of this e-commerce website is product screen it's for managing products you'll be able to create new product or edit your current products you can update all information and make it possible for you to upload images for your products. Also, you'll be able to delete a product from your e-commerce website. Great, that's it. We're gonna implement together in this course and I hope you will learn all technologies and tools we discuss in this course. I can't wait to see you for next lesson. Until next lesson, bye-bye. This is the first practical lesson for creating e-commerce website like Amazon using vanilla JavaScript. In this lesson, we are going to create folder structure and create index.html and launch that web page. Let's do that. First of all, we need to create a folder named JS Amazona in wherever you like in your computer. I'm going to create that in desktop from file menu in VS code, select add folder to workspace, select desktop and select new folder, JS, Amazona and press enter. Then go to this folder and click on add. As you see in the right side, the explorer section, there is a folder Amazona here. What we're gonna do at this step is to create front-end folder inside JS Amazona because this project consists of two sections. The first one is front-end part and the second one is for back-end. In this lesson, we're just focusing on uh, running the front-end part. Right-click, new folder, front-end, and press enter. After that, it's time to create SRC folder inside front-end. SRC. And we are good to go for creating index.html. This is the main entry point of this web application. Right click on SRC, new file and set file name to index.html. Here I'm going to use HTML colon 5 and press tab to create a very basic HTML structure and set title to JS Amazona. Also in the body section, I just create heading one JS Amazona. So it's time to show the result. The solution is using live dash server package on NPM. First of all, we need to convert front end folder 
to npm project let's open terminal new terminal and as you see we are in the root folder JS Amazon CD front end and inside this folder we are going to create a npm project npm init we do this by running this and for all questions only press enter that's it as you see inside front end folder a file named package.json created and this file means that the front end folder is a node project the next step is gonna be installing live dash server package to install that use npm install live dash server but the point is we are going to install this as a develop dependency it just for development so I set dash capital D to mention this point that we are going to use this package only in development phase. After installing this package, a new content is added to the package.json and it shows that live server dependency have been added to your project. It's time to create a start command. In the script section, press enter and set name to start and value is this command live server press and space serve src folder and the parameter is verbos put a comma at the end and by having this script when you type npm start index.html inside src folder will be served automatically let's test that press enter as you see js amazon is exactly the content of index.html so what we did in this session is to create folder structure for the front end part of js amazon and then serve that using live server the benefit of using live server is that when you have a change here let's say i'm adding a new paragraph the brand new commerce with vanilla js and save this automatically the new changes will be applied to the web browser and there is no need to refresh that manually also you have a complete log here as you see it says uh, change detect in this file and it just reload again your website great we are good to go for the next session but before that what I'm gonna do is to create a new file and set the file name to readme.md because I'm going to record all the steps of developing this web application in readme.md so here is JS Amazona and this is the step one of this project and here is the steps of creating folder structure lesson great for next lesson we are going to start designing website until that lesson bye bye in this lesson we are going to design website what we're gonna do is to create a template like this but there is no products in the screen and there is no search bar only a header with JS Amazon and there should be some links here like sign in and card and a content for entering data and at the end we are going to create a footer to say all right reserve 2020 let's implement this first of all we need to create style.css and then link that to the index.html click an explorer icon in this rc folder right click new file set file name to style.css and then what i'm gonna do is to go to index.html and write before title press enter and link this style.css to this web page rel is style sheet and href is gonna be style.css and close that 
by having this link, we just linked web page to style.css. For the third step, we need to create some elements inside index.html. Get rid of these two elements inside body and create dev and set class to grid container. Inside grid container, there should be three elements. The first one is header. Second one is main. And the third one is footer. For header, create a dev. And this dev is gonna be for showing brand name. Inside anchor, set href to slash dash slash and set the caption to js ma zona and create another dev the second dev is gonna be placed on the right corner of the top contain two anchor the first one is gonna be sign in dash slash sharp slash sign in And the second one is gonna be cart slash sharp slash cart. It's for showing shopping cart. In the main section, I'm going to enter products list and we will go for it in next lesson. In the footer section, all rights reserve at sign 2020. Let's check the result. As we saw together, we need to go to this address and we are going to format this ugly style HTML web page to this one. Let's go for it. We need to update style.css. First of all, let's set box sizing to border box for all elements. Star here means that all elements. Box sizing to border box it make it easy for us to better handle padding margin and bordering for elements second one is gonna be setting font size i'm going to use font size 62.5 percent because the default size for browser is 16 pixel and if we multiply that by 62.5, it's gonna be 10 pixel. And each 10 pixel is one unit or one rem. It's the responsive measurement for CSS. And instead of using pixel, in this course, we are going to use rem and one rem equal to 10 pixel. Let's set style for body. First of all, for body, we need to set height to full height, 100 viewport height, VH, and set font to 1.56 rem. And as you see, if we compare that with this table, it means it's going to be 16 pixel, the default size. And set font name to Helvetica. If Helvetica doesn't exist, use Arial. The last one is removing margin because by default body contains a margin and we are going to get rid of margin. That's the setting for body. Let's check the result. You know, as you see, there is no margin and font doesn't have any serif at all and uh, it's full height. Let's go for grid container. Grid container start with a dot because it's a class name and inside that i'm going to use new display method of css which is grid set display property to grid and when it comes to grid we need to define some templates area grid templates area it has three sections header and press enter 
main and press enter and footer so what i want to have is to have three rows header main and footer it's time to define columns and rows so grid template columns there is only one columns one fragment and rows it's gonna be three rows the first row occupy five rem 50 pixel second one is for main and it occupy the remaining part and the last section at the very bottom occupy five rem for footer and the last setting for grid container is setting height to a hundred percent let's check the result as you see here we have a header a content that occupy the whole height of a screen and a footer like this it's time to add some style to them make a background for header and footer and make the footer central line let's go for them for header set grid area to header background color to dark i'm going to use this code 20 30 40 set color to white use this format also it's time to use flex here why do we need to use flex because i'm going to keep js amazon and signing and cart in the same row that's why i need to use display flex let's go for it display equal to flex and set justify content to space between because i'm going to put the brand link in the left side and sign in and cart link on the right side that's why I use justify content space between and set a line item to center because in the 50 pixel height I'm going to put them in the center vertically and also create a small padding which is equal to 0.5 let's check the result here as you see I have JSM Amazona and signing and cart right here it's time to add a style to the link color let's go for them in the index.html set the first dev class to brand and in the style.css first of all for header anchor set color to white and for dot brand anchor set font size to 3 rem also for all header links set font weight to bold and set text decoration to none if user move mouse over a link we are going to change the color from white to orange let's do that header anchor when hover happens set color to orange f080 40 let's check the result you see it's gonna be like this very similar to this one let's go for footer dot footer set background color to 20 30 40 display to flex justify content center and align items center to and set color to white let's check the result aha uh -huh. it's gonna be like this so what we did in this session is to create the basic style of JSMS on our website 
we just created a header with two sections brand name and user links for signing and showing shopping cart and an area for listing products like this which is the topic of next lesson and an area for showing footer like this very good until next lesson bye bye in this lesson we are going to create static home screen what we want to do in this lesson is to create a static product items like this for each product there is an image title brand and price and we are going to place them next to each other and they are responsive too if you are using mobile version it's gonna be in one column let us start with creating ul with products class name open index.html inside src folder and inside the main section what i'm gonna do is to create a div and inside this div let's create unordered list and set class to products for unordered list we need to have some li's each li contains one product li inside this li create a div and set the class name to product so each box is gonna be a div with product class name if you check the result you will see that there is an image a title brand and price let's create separate divs for each section for image i'm going to create an anchor first and set address to let's say product slash an id i just enter id1 and inside this anchor i'm going to put an image and set source of image to slash images slash product dash one dot jpeg we are going to put an image inside image folder in src folder and set alt to product one it's image not im yeah like this and we are going to make it self-closing tag after creating image it's time to create product name set class to product dash name and inside this dev create a link and it's gonna be same link as product image and inside this link put product name let's say fit a slim shirt after product name i'm going to create product brand section dev class equal to product dash brand and let's set it to nike and the last section is for price dev set class to product dash price and put a dollar sign like 59 that's it for the html section of product elements let's go and copy a product inside image slash let's go and put an image inside image folder click on explorer inside src right click new folder and set folder name to images what i'm gonna do is to put an image inside this folder so find an image in your computer or over internet from a shirt and put that right here i just downloaded an image from internet like this and set its name to product-1.jpg and by having this i'm ready to check the result open your browser go to localhost colon 8080 and press enter and as you see this is the result 
I have a image here, the name of product as a link, brand and price. What we want to do in this step is to add some style to this product and make it like this one. We need to add a border at the top, set image size, set font size for title, for brand and for price. Let's go for them. Open style.css and at the very end, create a comment like products and start by styling products ul before adding some style let's duplicate li's one two make it five three four five so i will have six items one two two six in the style.css first of all we want to show li's next to each other instead of having in separate rows to do that set display to flex and also we are going to make them responsive set flex wrap to wrap also we do not like to have a bullet point next to hli get rid of them by setting list style type to noun and we do not like any padding or margin for products don't forget we need to set justify content to center to put the stuff next to each other there's a typo here flex wrap let's check the results here is the result. Let's go for next styles. For HLIs inside products class, I'm going to set flex to 0 to 0, 130 rem. It set the maximum width for each product to 300 pixel. Set margin to 1 rem and remove margin button we do not need margin button and set height to 42 rem and the last change is gonna be putting a border above hli border top equal to 0.2 rem it's gonna be two pixel and make it gray E0, 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 and the style of this border is gonna be solid. Let's check the result. It's like this, but we need to set the image size to have them in the screen. It's time to style the product in the index.html. We have product class, and let's style that product. We are going to set display to flex, but this time the flex direction is column because we are going to put item in separate lines inside a product. Flex direction to column and set justify content to space around. You know, it just create a space between image, price, title and brand and set height to full height like this don't forget for product put a dot because it's a class and after that for image inside product i'm going to set maximum height to 26 rem and maximum width to 22 rem also create a margin from top to 2 rem because it's not gonna stick to top border by having this we are going to check result uh-huh you see this time it's gonna get similar to this one it's time to add a style for product name brand and price for product name i'm going to set line height 
to 2.2 RAM. It's for multi-line product names. For product brand, what we want to do is to make the font size small and color gray. Font size is 1.2 RAM. And color is going to be dark gray, like 808080. For product price, make font size a bit bigger because price is an important attribute of a price. 2 rem. Great. Let's style the links. For links in the style.css scroll up and right after body create anchor set text decoration to none and when there is hover over a link set color to orange f0 you know it should be like this and also the link color is somehow black. Let's make it like Amazon for color. I'm going to set color to black. If you refresh, you can see it's going to be like this. Very good. We just implemented the home screen like this one for the rating part we're gonna do that in next lessons to make sure it's responsive you can open from more tools in google chrome developer tools and click on this icon to make it in mobile device here i'm checking that in iphone x and if i make it like a hundred percent you can see that it's super responsive and for large devices let's say ipad you know we have two items in a row so it is completely responsive without having any media query in the screen and only by using flexbox that's it for this lesson and for next lesson we are going to render this stuff dynamically using javascript until that lesson bye bye in this lesson we are going to convert static home page to dynamic one we are going to define an arrays of products inside data.js and then create app.js and link that to the index.html and inside this javascript file we are going to create a render function that convert products array to html element in the screen first of all let's create data.js inside front end folder in this rc folder right click new file and set the file name to data.js first of all we need to export an object that contains products as a property and products it's an array of products Let's do that, export default, and I'm going to return an object. This object contains products and product, it's an array. The first element of this array is an object which describe a product. Let's set an ID, I set it to a string one, name, let's say full zip running, shirts category shirts image i'm going to set it to slash images slash product dash one dot jpg set price to 60 dollar and brand to let's say skewing and set rating to let's say 4.5 and num reviews equal to 10. The last property for this product is gonna be count in. 
stock and let's make it like six. So here is the first product. What I'm gonna do is to duplicate this product five times and at the end I will have six products like this. Change the name and other information bits based on your preference and also the products should be in a reasonable scale but what you can do is to go to my git repository for this project and download data.js and also all images inside image folder in the git repository for this project i'm going to make them ready like this as you see here is a list of six products and you can type them directly or you can use them from my repository also for images i'm going to do the same i'm going to copy the images to this folder and there we go there are six images here and also in the data.js there is six products inside product array great let's go back to plan after creating data.js and exporting arrays of six products it's time to create home screen inside a screen let's go to src right click new folder and set folder name to a screens inside a screens folder create new file and set file name to home screen.js next step should be export home screen as an object with render method inside here i define const home screen and it's like an object and it contains a method like render equal to a function in this function, I'm going to return an unordered list of products. Let's implement this. Here, I'm going to use template literals. And inside that, press enter. So it's possible for us to return an string with multiple lines. And also, we can use JavaScript object inside template literals using dollar sign curly braces. First of all, create a ul and set class of this ul to products and inside that here i am going to get access to the products inside data.js so i just put a dollar sign curly braces and type products and use map to convert each product inside products array to li's so inside this i'm going to use another backtick and press enter and here what i need to do is to define an li and inside this li let's close that i'm going to use the content that i already created in previous sessions inside index.html right here i'm going to copy one of this li's content only yeah this part and paste them right here and create indentation to make them you know clear and as you see here i'm defining all information about a product so by having this i'm ready to update static data like product title brand and others based on the product object so instead of having this address which is a static i use dollar sign curry braces and use product dot image instead of having a static alt for product one i replace that with product.name for href instead of having something like this i get rid of that and convert that with product 
dot underline id for product name it should be converted to product dot name and for brand it's gonna be product dot brand and the last one is about price dollar sign product dot price so we just created a render function that convert product array to a list of li's inside a ul here we need to import products from data.js what i need to do is to run import data from dot dot slash data.js the reason i'm using dot dot because i'm in the screen folder i need to go back to src folder from here and then get access to data.js also inside the render function i define const products equal to data so i'm using deconstructing assignment because i'm going to get access to property products inside data that's the way i can use in es6 version of javascript that's it for this part let's go in the readme file and follow the plan what i did so far is to implement render method of home screen i just imported data.js and also i return product mapped to li's inside ul the next step is gonna be creating app.js and inside that i need to link it to index.html as a module in the src folder right click new file and set file name to app.js and go to index.html and in the head section right after title create a script tag set type to module and set src to app.js and close it by setting type to module it's possible to use app.js as an independent module inside your index.html that's it for configuring index.html and it's time to go to app.js and start coding here let's go back to plan and here it's time to set main id to main container inside index.html inside index.html for the main section i'm going to set the id of main to main dash container let's go back to plan after setting this to main dash container it's time to create a rotor function inside app.js and set main container inner html home screen dot render so inside app.js what i'm gonna do is to define rotor function like this and inside that i need to get access to main container const main equal to document dot get element by id and the name of id is main container after that i need to set main dot inner html equal to home screen dot render like this it's time to import home screen in the home screen.js at the very end i need to export home screen so at the end of it type export default home screen like this and inside app.js to import home screen here type import home screen from dot slash screens slash home screen so that's it for importing home screen let's go back to plan we need to set load event of the window to router function let's do that in the app.js at the very end window 
dot add event listener for load event set it to router function don't forget you need to prefix that with js here and let's see what we have right now as you see we have this result and if you see a comma here you can get rid of comma by doing this inside home screen.js and right after the map function at the very end of the last you know right after the closing parentheses of map function put join and slash n let's check the result aha uh -huh. this time we have dynamic data here let's get rid of static content inside main container in index.html you know i'm going to cut all of them and get rid of them you see i have only a main element like this and if i refresh as you see i have all content but this time this content are dynamic let's say if you change this one from this to 95 what happens in the data.js change 60 to 95 and save it you see you have this change instantly right here very good what we did for this session is to convert index.html with static products to dynamic one that rendered by javascript we have used three files the app.js like this uh, it just called the render method of home screen and also a home screen object that contains render method that convert products array to ul and allies and also a data.js which is the data center of this project for the front end part okay so in the next lesson what we want to do is to create router you know when you click on a product and change the url it should show the details of the product until that lesson bye bye in this lesson we are going to implement url routing what we want to do is to make this possible when you click on a product the url is gonna be changed like this slash product and the id of that product and you will be redirected to a new page also we are going to implement 404 error page let's implement that here is the plan uh, first of all we need to create a route a screen object for home screen open frontend rc app.js and what we want to do here right before the router function define const routes and it's an object the key is gonna be the name of this url and the value is gonna be the screen that respond to this url for slash it means the home screen the responder is home screen and for slash product a slash colon id and colon id here means that it's just a placeholder for the real id that is gonna be replaced with the browser address bar and the responder is gonna be product screen we need to create product screen first let's go to a screens folder right click new file and set file name to product screen.js i'm going to keep it as simple as possible const product a screen equal to an object that contains a render function and it just return product a screen wrap it inside backtick and and that's it let's export default product a screen
Here it's time to import this. I press on N, press tab, and it's gonna get imported automatically right here. Let's follow the plan. After creating routes object, it's time to create util.js and inside that we are going to define a function to parse request URL. In the src, right click, new file, utils.js and inside that export const the name of function is parse request url it doesn't accept any parameter because it has access to document.location.hash and that's what we're gonna use to create routes let's get the url i'm going to use this const url equal to document dot location dot hash and i'm going to make it to lowercase i'm going to split that by forward slash so const request equal to url dot split by forward slash and at the end I'm going to return an object that contains three properties the first one is resource equal to the second element of request it's gonna be request a square bracket one because it's zero index array one points to second item ID is gonna be the third element which is request two. Request two. And the last one is action. The last part of request equal to three. By returning this object, we can get access to the resource. Let's say in the app.js here, the resource is product. And also we have access to the real ID which in this case is the ID that user entered in the address bar to get access to the details of this product. It's time to use that function inside router function. Right after the beginning of body of router function, let's define const request equal to parse request url press tab to import this function right here it's time to define parse url const parse url equal to first of all i need to check request dot resource if request dot resource exists then i just return this a slash dollar sign request dot resource otherwise enter a slash itself it's gonna be for the home page so i'm going to concatenate this string you know let's say this string as a whole string and then i'm going to concatenate this with this part, their ID part. If request dot ID exists, use slash colon ID. Otherwise, use empty string. And at the end, concatenate this with the last part, which is about the verb. Request dot verb. If it exists use this string slash dollar sign curly braces request dot where otherwise empty string put semicolon and save the file so by having parse url i can compare this value with the items inside routes key let's do that const a screen equal to routes and inside square bracket i put parse url 
if a value for this parse URL exists, I'm going to return that routes parse URL. Otherwise, I want to return an error page. Let's set that error page to error 404 screen. Good. It's time to implement 404 error screen. What I'm going to do is to duplicate product screen and rename that to error 404 screen.js. Here I just show a message page not found. That's it. Let's set the name of constant to error 404 and use that in the export part. Let's go back to app.js and at this point it's time to import this. Select the last font, press enter to import the 404 screen. So here I have the screen and at this point instead of rendering home screen, I'm going to render the router screen, the screen that calculated based on the route that user entered in the address bar of browser. But we need to call render method of that screen. And the last step to implement routing is adding an event listener for hash change of the window. Window dot add event listener for hash change. The responder is router function. That's it. Let's check the results. Here, when I click on a product, I will be redirected to product screen. And when I click on the home page, I will get the home page. Also, if I enter a not exist route, what do I get? Page not found. That's it for this lesson. What we implemented together is adding routing to this e-commerce website so it's possible for us in the app.js to define lots of resources and pages and make it possible to create different pages right here and implement the details of those page in different JavaScript file. That's it for this lesson. And what we're gonna do for the next lesson is to create a very simple Node.js backend server because we are going to serve some data and make the data you see in the home screen to backend data instead of having a data.js as a static in the front end side. We are going to move this to the backend and make it possible to send AJAX requests to the server and get data and show them in the front end like this. Until that lesson, bye bye. In this lesson, we are going to create a very basic Node.js server. If you check the final version of JS Amazona and open the network tab of Chrome DevTools, when you refresh this page, you will see that in the XHR section, you know, the AJAX request part, this page send an AJAX request to this address slash API slash products. And what it get is an arrays of product. So what we are going to do in this lesson is to create a backend like this and this API sent an arrays of products. Go to your VS code. And here is the plan. First of all, I need to create a folder like backend inside the root folder, new folder, backend, because I'm working on the backend folder. And inside that, I'm gonna make a new file and set file name to server.js. Here I need to write some code to create a 
small backend to send a list of products to the frontend. First of all, I need to convert JS Amazon R folder, I mean the root folder, to a node project. From terminal menu, open new terminal, run npm in it. Press enter and for all questions, only press enter and accept default. After creating package.json by running npm in it, it's time to go for the next step. We need to install Express. Express is a web server framework that can be run on node runtime. npm install Express. So let's go back to the server.js and at this point, what I'm going to do is to get access to the express package. const express equal to require express. Next command is gonna be running express function and this function return an object which is our web app. const app equal to express calling so it's super easy to create a route by using app it's like this app dot get get is the http verb get slash api slash products and the second parameter is a callback function that accept request and response it's http request and response and inside this function, we are going to return the array that we have in data.js. So what I'm gonna do is to go to frontend folder, src, and copy this from here, and then move it to the backend folder right here. And instead of export default, what I'm gonna do is to make it like this model.export equal to this because I'm using common JS style of importing and exporting content in JavaScript. Let's go back to the server.js and in this line I'm going to get access to the data.js in backend. So I'm closing the frontend part and to get access to this what I need to do is using this command const data equal to require dot slash data dot js it's very important to put dot slash because if you do not set dot slash no js suppose that it's a npm package not a file in your folder great let's go back to the body of api function and here I'm going to use rest.send. It's for sending data to the client. And the data that I'm gonna send is data.products. So I just created a very simple route, but it's not done. To make it done and run a server, we need to run app.lesson function. The first parameter is port number let's say port to 5000 and here is the responder you know when it creates that server successfully this function is gonna run and i'm going to console log serve at http colon slash slash localhost colon 5000 so by having this 11 lines of code, I could able to make a web server. Let's run this web server. To run this, what I need to do is to go to package.json. Be careful, it's not in the frontend folder, it's in the root folder. And in the script section, press enter, start, equal to what I'm gonna run by calling start command is running node and put on a space backend folder 
slash server.js and put a comma here. So when you run this command in terminal npm start, this command is going to run in the terminal. Press enter. As you see, the serve at this address. Keep command or control and click on it to open that. You will get this error. The reason is the route we have defined is slash API slash products. Press enter and you will get this result. If your content hasn't have a format like this, you can install JSON Viewer package through Chrome extension store. Great. What we did together in this short lesson is creating a very simple Node.js server that serve list of products like this at this address. We will use in the next session from this address by sending an Ajax request from front end and get data from the back end and show them to the user. Until that lesson, bye bye. In this lesson, we are going to load products from back end. In previous session, we created an API at this address, localhost column 5000 slash API slash products. And what we are going to do in this session is to send an Ajax request from front end and get this data from back end. Let us start by coding this part. First of all, make sure that you have two instances of node. The first one is running npm start in the root folder of Amazona for back end. And also in the front end, you should run npm start in the front end folder. By having this, we are ready to start coding. First of all, edit home screen and make render function async. Open home screen. And here is the render function. Make that async. Second step, fetch products from slash API slash product in the render method. So what we are going to do at this point is to send an Ajax request. So instead of getting data about products from data, which is a hard coded JavaScript file in the front end, we want to send an Ajax request to the server and get that from a backend. To do that, we need to use this function, fetch const response equal to await fetch. Fetch method accept two parameters. The first parameter is the URL we are going to send a request to. Let's set that to HTTP colon slash slash local host colon 5000 slash API slash products. So if you check this address, it's gonna it's going to be exactly the one we created in the backend part. And the second one is a bunch of options. It's an object like headers. And in the headers, you can set the content type is application JSON. Because if you check the output that returns by this API is an array and this array is in json format at this point it's time to check the response if response is null i just put exclamation mark before that or response dot okay is false it means that there is an error in getting data from this backend so i need to show a message return an error let's return an error let's make a div and inside that error in getting data and finish this function at this point at this point it means that this request is successful so it's time to fill products const products equal to here I'm going to use await because 
I want to call response.json and the JSON function return a promise and by using await I can convert that promise to real data and save that data inside products variable. So there is no need to have this line at all and by having these lines of code it's possible to get backend data in the front end part. The last step to implement this feature is to go to app.js. Open app.js and inside this function what I'm going to do is to change this line the render method to async. So first of all I need to set router function to async and change this method to await. The reason I do like this is that the render method itself inside the home screen is async so if I need to use the value or the return part of this I need to use that in the app.js as a wait. Let's check the results. In the console you can see this message. It says that it has been blocked by course policy. So we need to fix this issue. What we need to do is to install course package in, in backend. So open server.js and open terminal. Open a new terminal in the root folder npm install course. And by installing that in the server.js import that const course equal to require course and we need to use this app.use like this so by having this configuration it's possible to send requests from different url to this address let's open the running version of backend stop it and run it again and then go back to the web app and refresh as you see this time it works and if you click on network section in the xhr part there is a request like this the address of this request is slash api slash product and the value is gonna be like this and if you check the request header you can see that the course policy have been set for this request and response accept that access control allow origin very good let's get rid of this line because we do not need the data in the front end also you can delete the data.js in the front end folder because we are going to get access data from backend and at this point we just get our data from backend that's all for this lesson for next lesson we are going to install babel to start coding in es6 syntax in the backend until that lesson bye bye in this lesson we are going to use webpack to manage javascript files and merge them inside one single javascript file to serve by web server what's the benefit of using webpack if you check the final version of project here i'm going to open the network section and the js part and when i refresh as you see there is only one main .js file and all other javascript file inside src folder merge together in one file and it makes the speed more faster but if you check the current version as you see here when i go to network section and in the js part when i refresh as you see there is one two three four five file that need to be downloaded from the web server so the first benefit of using webpack is speed and the second one npm packages 
In this lesson, we are going to use Axios library to send AJAX requests. And to use that, we have to install Webpack and use Webpack to include external libraries like Axios into our web application. Let us start by plan. Here, first of all, I need to go to front end folder, open your terminal, and there is an instance of backend, and there is another instance for front end. Create another instance of terminal and go to front end folder. We are going to install free packages, and these packages are development mode, they are development dependency. It's gonna be npm install dash development webpack webpack dash cli and webpack dash dev server the first two packages make it possible to combine all javascript files and build a final main.js and the last one webpack dev server is just for development phase it means that it just check your files and when there is a change in your javascript files it automatically reload your web server and apply changes very good we have done the first step and by having this there is no need to use live server anymore let's get rid of it npm on install live server by uninstalling live server, we need to update package.json inside frontend folder. Go to frontend folder and open package.json. And what I'm gonna do here, change the start command from live server to this one. Let's do that. Get rid of live server and webpack dash dev server i'm going to set two parameters the first parameter is watch content base by setting this parameter it just check your source folder and when there is a change in your folder it rebuild your final javascript file and the second parameter that i'm going to use is open it automatically open your web browser and launch web application there let's go for the next step we need to move files like index.html style.css and images one folder up i mean we need to move images index.html i keep control button to select all of them and style.css and drag them to the front end folder like this click on move that's it Let's review what we did together. Uh, I just moved images from SRC folder to the front end folder. The second change move index.html from SRC folder to the front end. And the last one is style.css from SRC folder to front end folder. That's it. We have done this part. Let's go for the next step rename app.js to index.js. Inside src folder, there is app.js. I just right click, rename it to index.js. The next change, update index.html. Inside frontend folder, open index.html. Get rid of app.js script here and scroll down right before body section create a script tag and set src to main.js and close it if you check the front end folder there is no main.js file but it's okay because web dev server automatically create main.js on the fly and you can use that and it's time to test the result what i'm gonna do here is to stop running all instance of terminal click on this icon to close all of them and then open it again new terminal first of all run npm start on the root folder for backend side 
click on plus again this time we need to go to front end folder and run npm start by running this this command run on the terminal let's check it press enter you see this command and let's check the result i'm getting the exact result like the one that i have with live server let's open chrome dev tools go to network section and here refresh this time instead of having lots of files i only have main.js and it contains all javascript file combined in main.js in this step i'm going to show one of benefits of using webpack what i'm gonna do is to open a new terminal and install axios library it's an ajax request tools to install that go to front end folder run npm install axios and press enter after installing this it's time to open src screen home screen and what i'm gonna do in this function is to replace fetch method with axios to do that i just replace fetch with axios and at the very top of this screen import axios from axios it's the way we import packages from npm org the syntax of axios is a bit different from fetch i need to cut this from here and move that inside the option part like this also for the result part i need to check the response like this if status text does not equal to OK, it's capital O and capital K, then show error message. Otherwise, the product is gonna be response.data, and there is no need to have a wait at all. So, what I did in this sample code is to convert fetch method to Axios one. Uh, using Axios instead of fetch method is much better because there are lots of benefits of using axios over fetch so let's check the result to make sure if it works perfect or not open your browser refresh you see we are getting the same result if i open the network section and the js part and refresh i'm going to disable cache and refresh this time you can see it just changed the size of this file because inside this file axios merged and combined with the main.js to make sure i just search for axios as you see axios.js included inside the main.js that's it for this lesson what we did together in this lesson is to use webpack to handle all javascript files and combine them together in one single file to improve the speed and also make it possible to use npm packages to apply them to the project that's it for this lesson and for next lesson we are going to install babel for backend javascript files and make it possible to use es6 version of javascript in the backend side too until that lesson bye bye in this lesson we are going to install babel transpiler for converting es6 code in backend to s5 which can be run on node.js what we wanna get at the end of this lesson is to write ES6 version of JavaScript code in the backend. As you see right here in the server.js, the style that we are going to import the stuff is based on common JS, which is in ES5 version. But what we are looking to do is to convert that to the import export version, which is for ES6. It's exactly what we use in the 
front end part using import instead of using require. To implement this, we are going to use Babel Transpiler. First of all, I'm going to remove all instance of terminals and open a new terminal in the root folder and install some packages. These packages are on the development side. So I use dash D parameter to install them as a dev dependency. At sign Babel core, at sign Babel CLI, at sign Babel node, and Babel slash preset dash ENV. And it should be install, not start. After installing these packages, it's time to create .babelrc file. This file is configuration for Babel transpiler. Right click in the root folder, create new file, put .babelrc. The format of this file is JSON, so create query braces inside that presets is an arrays of array an array of array the first parameter is gonna be at sign babel slash preset dash env it's exactly like this one preset dot env and the second configuration is an object and inside this object i set targets to node and the version of node is current that's the setting for using babel in our project next step i'm going to install nodemon nodemon is very similar to node it just run your javascript file but the difference is when you create a change in your code it just rerun your node application automatically you don't need to stop and start it again and again when you have a change in your code. Let's install that npm install dash d nodemon. After installing nodemon, it's time to update start command in the script section of package.json. We want to update this. There is no need to have node backend slash server.js and instead of this we are going to use nodemon and babel the command is gonna be nodemon dash dash watch here i'm introducing the folder that nodemon need to watch for sure it should watch the backend folder so i type backend here and the second parameter is exec it means that while nodemon watching this folder, what command should be run when there is a change in this folder? Here, I'm going to use babel node, babel dash node. It's like node, but the difference is it automatically transfer ES6 code to S5 and run it on the node runtime. This command need a JavaScript file to run. So, the entry point of my backend is server.js. It should be backend slash server.js. Save the file and in the terminal run npm start. That's it. We just created the server and if you command click or control click on it, and go to address API slash products, you will get the result. So the node server works. At the end of this lesson, I'm going to convert server.js ES5 require to ES6 import module. So instead of this line, I'm going to use this import express from express if you do not have this setting here you will get an error but this time you see there is no import error let's convert the next one import cars from cars 
And the last one, which is about data import data from dot slash data dot js and get rid of this two line. You see, automatically server restart. At the end of this lesson, we incorporate Babel transpiler to our project and converted server.js from ES5 format to ES6. In the data.js, you need to convert module.export from this format to export default, which is ES6 version of exporting stuff. As you see, the result is same because we are using ES6 version and Babel convert that to the ES5 that can be run on Node.js runtime. That's it for this lesson. For next lesson, we are going to focus on code linting. It means that when there is an error in your code, we are going to use ESLint to show that error and let us to fix that and make our code clean and consistent. Until that lesson, bye-bye. In this lesson, we are going to enable code linting on backend and frontend project. Here I'm in server.js. Let's say what happens if I change app to app one. What I'm supposed to get from code editor is red underline for app because app is not defined. And for app one, there should be a warning that let me know that I need to change this to something that is using in this code. This feature is called code linting. It helps developers find errors faster and fix them easier. We are going to use ESLint as a code linter. So let's use that. Open terminal. And in the root folder of JS Amazona, install ESLint as a dev dependency. npm install dash d ESLint. After installing ESLint, it's time to go to VS Code extension and search for ESLint. Type ESLint and press enter and click the ESLint. At this page, you need to click install button because I've already installed it. It just show me uninstall. So you need to click on green install button for ESLint and wait a moment to install that. After installing ESLint, installing ESLint package, it's time to go for configuration. What we're gonna do is to create .eslintrc.js. Right click, new file in the root folder, enter .eslint.js rc.js in this javascript file we, we are going to define setting for eslint the setting it's like a javascript module let's implement that module dot exports equal to the first parameter is for environment we are going to use browser because we have front end to true you are going to use backends, so set node to true, and also set ES2020 to true. They are environments for this ESLint configuration. The second option for ESLint is about extends or extensions. We are going to use extend equal to set Airbnb base. Air bmb base it's just a list of coding rules that make your code consistent and integrated that's it for extension and let's set parser options parser options equal to set source type to module the reason we are going to use this setting is because of using import export ES6 module style in our backend project. And it's time to set ECMAScript or JavaScript version. ECMA version equal to 11. We need to install this package. 
To do that, open terminal and run this command npm install dash d eslint dash config dash airbnb dash base and put in a space install the second important plugin eslint dash plugin dash import the first plugin apply Airbnb coding style and the second one make it possible to have import export validation in your JavaScript code. So by installing these two packages, it's time to press Ctrl Shift P and type ESLint. This time select disable ESLint and then type again this command and this time select enable ESLint. In the .eslint rc, there is a typo in the file name, rename, get rid of dot .here. It should be .eslint rc.js. By pressing enter and opening server.js, this time you can get errors. So, the first error is about not using app1. If I change it to app, this error is gonna gone. The second error is about not having a line space between imports and code. By pressing enter, it's gonna work. The next error, it says unexpected use of file extension. You can get rid of this here. As you see, it just apply a coding style that make your code better to maintain and extend. Also, there are some warnings. If you don't like to have these warnings, it's easy. Just click on it and then click on this lamp icon and then click on disable no console for the entire file. And if you are interested to not have this type of error in other files, what you need to do is to copy this part of ESLint disable go to .eslintrc.js and right after parser option, press enter and create rules section. For rules section, create single quotes and paste no dash console and put colon and zero. By having this, all errors about console is gonna be gone. Let's get rid of this. And as you see, there is no warning or error next to this line. So what we did in this session is to enabling code linting in our project and it just apply to the front end too. If I open a project, a front end folder, let's say home screen, you know, it just apply this to this. Let's press Ctrl S to apply this. If you press Ctrl S, this setting doesn't work. It means that you need to enable code action on save to fix all ESLint. So let's do that. Press Command Shift P or Ctrl Shift P and type JSON. Select Preferences, open JSON file and add this two line. The first line is editor.format on save to true. This is the first setting you need to add. And the second one is this, editor.codeactions on save to source.fixall.eslint to true. By adding this too, when you press Ctrl S in your code, all errors is gonna fixed. So if you have files that there are some errors, that file is gonna be read like this and this and you need to fix them so that's it for this lesson what we did together is to enable code linting using eslint in our project and for next session we are going to install some vs code extension to better and faster code until that lesson bye bye in this lesson we are going to install some important and useful vs code extensions the first extension we're gonna install is JavaScript ES6 code snippets. Click on extension icon, type JavaScript 
ES6 and press enter. And the first item is this. Click on green install button if you haven't installed it already. And also check some snippet that it provides for you. For example, if you want to import something, what you need to do is to open your JavaScript file and instead of typing import and then name of the package you're gonna import, type IMP and press tab. Second, VS Code extension. ES7 React Redux GraphQL React Native Snippet. In this lesson, we're not going to use React Redux and other frameworks at all. But using ES7 provides some useful snippets that we can use them in our pure JavaScript e-commerce system. Click here, like the previous one, type ES7 React and it's gonna be at the very top. And here there are lists of all snippets that you can use. For example, you can use four of syntax like this. Open your server.js and here let's say you are going to create a for of type fof and press tab and it just provides ready for loop for you to move forward that's it for the second one the third one is very important it's prettier if format your code provide indentation fix syntax issues and stuff like that type prettier and here it's code formatter. After installing this, Prettier provides some coding rules for you. And when you save your file, it apply those rules to your code. If you remember from previous lesson, ESLint do the same thing. So using Prettier and ESLint together provide some problems. To fix these problems, what you need to do is to install ESLint config prettier. To do that, open your terminal and install this npm install dash d ESLint config prettier. After installing Conflict Resolver for Prettier and ESLint, it's time to enable that. Click here, open ESLintRC.js, and for the extend section as a last item in this array, type Prettier. So, by having this setting, if you open a file, let's say I'm opening a screen, home screen, you will not see any errors. It just fix all errors about creating indentation, making space between items and applying formatting rules. If you do not have this, let's say I get rid of this and save it. As you see, there are some errors in home screen, but when you enable it, you see, there is no error at all. Great. We just install the third VS Code extension, the next extension. It's a very important one. We are going to use template retlars in our code very much and using HTML less grammar injections make it possible in our template literal like this one uh, we have syntax highlighter suppose that we do not have this you know to install it you need to click here type grammar injection and the first option is this let's see if we do not have it i just disable it in the home screen.js you will have this you know there is no syntax highlighter for html elements inside template literals but if I install it and enable it, what do you see here? You see, it just enable HTML syntax highlighter for us. So it's a very important for this course. So in this session, we just install four important extension. The first one is JavaScript ES6 code snippets. Second one is ES7 React, React Native. 
third one is prettier and also we have installed a helper extension to work with ASLint and the last one is HTML less grammar injection. By having this VS Code extension, you are good to code better and faster in this course. For next lesson, we are going to get into code again and uh, the configuration part is done and it's time to start coding again with creating rating component. Until that lesson, bye bye. In this lesson, we are going to create rating components. What we want to have at the end of this lesson is to have five star rating like this and also a text next to stars to show product popularity in the e-commerce website. We are going to use font awesome library to create stars. Let's go for them. Here is the plan. First of all, make sure you run npm start on the root folder and also you have created another instance and in the front end folder run npm start to start application like this and then it's time to create component folder and rating.js file click on explorer in the front end folder rc right click new folder components and inside that create new file rating.js for next step we are going to link font awesome in index.html open index.html and write before style.css link create another link and this link is gonna be to link font awesome set relation to style sheet href to CDN library of font awesome https colon slash slash cdn js dot cloudflare dot com slash ajax slash libs font awesome we are going to use version 4.7.0 slash css slash font awesome dot min dot css and then close it that's it here is the link to font awesome and by having this we can use font awesome icons in our e-commerce website let's go to rating.js it is very similar to a screen we need to have an object that has a render method let's implement that const rating equal to an object and this object has a render method at the end we need to export default rating first of all render method accept two parameters the first one is the number of stars and the second one is the text that need to be written next to stars i put them inside props so props is an object that contains some properties like values text and etc if props dot value it's the star it's the number of star if it doesn't exist or if it's a zero i need to return an empty dev dev empty dev otherwise return backtick literal and inside that first of all create a dev and set the class of this dev to rating because we are going to set the color of stars to gold and close that inside this dev we are going to create some stars let's go for the first one create a span inside the span create icon but here the class is very important for this icon we need to check the value so i put dollar curry braces because i'm going to write, write javascript code here if props that value i mean if rating is greater than or equal to one what i want to render is f a space f a star and close single quotes what does it render in the screen it render a full star otherwise i need to check props dot value if it's greater than or equal to 0 0.5 i need to render f a 
space f a dash star dash half dash o. It means half a star. Otherwise, otherwise I need to render empty star. It's gonna be this class f a space f a dash star dash o. It's outline empty star and close the icon and also close the span. There is an ESLint error and it says do not nest ternary expression. We do not like to see this error anymore. So click here, click on this lamp and select this one. And you can copy this from here. Go to ESLint and in the rule section, put it in, inside single code and set it to zero. And also you can get rid of this. So you will not see this error anymore. That's it for the first star. There are five stars. So I need to duplicate this four times. One, two, three, four. For the second star here, the value should be two. This condition should be 1.5. 3, 2.5, 4, 3.5, and the last one, 5, 4.5. So what I did in this component is to create a render function to show stars based on the props.value. But what if I want to show a text next to stars? To do that, in the last span, right after last span, create another span. Let's close it. And inside this span, I am going to use this JavaScript condition. If props.text exists, render it. Otherwise, it means if it's null or undefined, render empty string. That's it for the rating part and we are going to use that in the home screen. Open a screen, home screen and right after the product name dev, create another dev and set class of this dev to product dash rating and inside this what I'm going to do is to use rating component. Put dollar sign, curly braces, rating dot render, call rating dot render function. I need to import rating. When I remove last character of rating and type it again, autocomplete show me an option. And if I press tab, it's gonna be imported like this. Also for render method, we need to pass an object and this object contains two properties, value and the value should be rating, product.rating and the text. The text is gonna be number of review. I concatenate reviews with this text reviews if i save the file it automatically converted to template ultra which is more clear and better so here is the code to use rating component and this is the rating component itself let's check the result as you see here is number of stars but they are not gold to make them gold what we need to do is to go to style.css open style.css and at the very end of the screen create a section for rating what we want to do here is to add a class for rating depth set color to gold ffc000 and set font size a bit smaller 
1.4 rem let's check the result aha uh -huh. this time it's gold but i don't like to have caption gold i want to change the text to black to do that let's use this css style inside rating dev for span which is the last child set color to let's say four 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 let's check the result aha uh -huh. you know it's this if we want to make it exactly like this we need to increase the font size let's do that change font size from 1.4 to 1.8 aha uh -huh, that's it so it's very similar to the final version that we have in js amazona great what we did in this lesson is to create rating components and at the end of this lesson we have a rating like this but don't forget here the size of this text should be small inside the rating inside the style.css set font size for last child to 1.4 rem and by having this it's gonna be a small and exactly like the final one that's it for this lesson until next lesson which is about creating product screen you know the screen that shows all information about the product like this bye bye in this lesson we are going to create product details page but it's not about creating all details like this we are going to create a page that only show the title of product in this path what we need to do is to create an api on the back end and create a function on the front end to send ajax request to get all data about the product in this lesson we implement this part and for the next lesson after getting all data in a front end part we go for the ui part to shape this page let us start with coding here is the plan first of all we need to go to product screen and get product id from request let's do that in the explorer src screen open product screen for the rendered let's define a function body and get request from parse request url function const request equal to i'm going to call parse request url let's import parse request url import curly braces parse request url from dot 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 slash util what i need to do at this point is to send an ajax request to the server to get all information about a product with request.id so const product equal to i'm using await because get products returns a promise and what i want to get from this method is the real data about the product get product we need to implement this function request.id because we are using await here the render function should be async it's time to implement get products there are two ways to implement that the first way is to implement it right here but i do not recommend this because we need to have a single file to send ajax request to the server so let's create that file i'm going to create that inside the src folder set file name to api.js what i'm gonna do in the api.js is to define a function to get product information export const get product this function is async because we are going to send an ajax request it get an id it's the id of the product and what i'm gonna do at this point is 
to create try catch because if there is an error in the request, I want to send the correct information to the caller and the catch part should handle errors here. Let's define const response and it's gonna be await Axios. We are going to use Axios to send Ajax request. Axios accept all parameters for sending a request through this object. The first one is URL and the URL prefix is the address of backend. I'm not going to repeat address of backend again and again. So I just define a config file inside SRC like this and set the file name to config.js. In this file, all configuration above the front end should be set. Let's define export const API URL equal to the address is HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon 5000. That's it. Let's go back to api.js and here I'm going to use that constant. It should be api URL and I can get rid of last L and when it's blue API URL autocomplete if I press tab it's gonna get imported automatically and plus concatenate that with the address of this API slash API slash products and here the ID of this products should be appended plus ID and here it's await let's see you know it just converted to template literal and it's much better than having plus inside the strings okay let's go for other settings the method that i'm going to send request to the server is get and in the headers section i'm going to set content type to application json that's it. Let's get rid of this error. This error says that import prefer default. I just like other errors that ESLint give to us. Let's click on this, copy this part, and then go to ESLint RC file and add it inside single quote and put a zero. That's it. We just get rid of this error. Let's continue API. Here it's time to import Axios. Import Axios from Axios. In the lesson about Webpack, we have installed Axios library. If you haven't installed it, just open your console, open a new terminal, go to front end folder and run npm install Axios. After pressing enter, it's gonna automatically install and you shouldn't get any error about Axios at all. At this point, I just get the response and it's time to evaluate that response. To evaluate that, what I'm gonna do is to have a if condition here and compare response.status text with OK. Here I'm using negative condition because if there is an error i should throw new error and the message of error is gonna be response dot data dot message let's get rid of extra equal sign here that's it at this point the result is okay the response of ajax request is okay and it's time to return data return response.data in the catch part when there is an error i console log that error and then return this object error equal to error dot message that's it about creating get product function to send an ajax request to server and get data about the products and it's time to implement this API. Let's open server.js inside backend folder. And inside backend folder, what I'm going to do 
is to add a new router app.get slash api slash products slash colon id it's a placeholder for the real id of product that i need to return and create rec res function to respond the data res.send this time what i'm gonna do is to use find function on array data dot products dot find x goes to x dot underline id equal to rec dot params dot id what is rec dot params dot id it's exactly the id that user enter in the request at this part what if this id doesn't exist let's define const product equal to and make it as a result of this find function you know like this and then check if product exists then return that product okay if it doesn't exist the else part in the else part res set a status to 404 so it just return 404 error and what's the message send message equal to product not found so we just created a backend api for slash api slash products product id and in the front end section we created a function to send a request to that api and get the product information it's time to go to product screen and at this point what i'm gonna do is to import get products from api get rid of the last character and type it and select the blue one click on it to import get products at this point i should have the product here let's just return the name of the, this product what i'm gonna do is to create a template literal and create the h1 and inside that product dot name it's just for test that it works and close the h1 let's check the results go to browser you see here i have the product here let's click on the home page and select another one as you see the name of product comes here if you open chrome dev tools and go to network section and refresh and select the xhr you will see that this api with this url send the ajax request to the server and the data is exactly like this and at this point the name is this one and the name appears right here what if if you enter a wrong id let's say this and press enter you are getting undefined you know here it says product not found so instead of undefined we can fix this in the product screen after getting product if product dot error exists we can return a dev and and inside that dev show the error product dot error it's exactly the error that comes from the backend let's check that and refresh you see request failed with status code 404 and this error comes from where comes from the api at this point when there is an error it just return that error and it's gonna be like this also we can return the exactly error in the backend side if you check the backend the exact error is product not found let's show exactly this error here to do that what i'm gonna do is to look for error dot response dot data dot message if it doesn't exist return error dot message let's see what we have you see product not found so that's it for this lesson 
what we did in this lesson is to create an API file to send a request to the server to get information about a specific product. We created a config.js to use same API URL throughout the code, updated product screen to send an Ajax request and get data about a specific product and show the name of product on the screen and if there is an error we show the error message that comes from the backend and also in the server.js we added a new endpoint to get information about a specific product for next lesson we are going to shape this structure by data that we are getting from server in this lesson, we are going to design product details page like this. At the end of last session, we could manage to send an Ajax request and get details information about a product. And it's time to shape that like this. So let's check the elements of this page. There is a back to result button and three columns, image, product info, and action. Let's go for them. And in the return section, instead of returning h1, what I'm gonna return is a div that contains all columns. Div, set class of this div to content and close it. Create back to result. First of all, create a div for that and set the class to back to result and a link that points to the home page and the title is back to results and close it create another div and set this div class to details because it's gonna be used for showing details of a product and close this inside this div there are three columns let's create three divs first div is details image and inside that there should be an image source is gonna be product.image product.image and the alternative text should be product.name and close this self-closing tag let's close this step for details image and it's time to go for details info create a div set class to details dash info and close this div inside the body of this div we are going to show list of data if you check the final result there should be one two three four section so it's much better to use a ul ul li and the first li is gonna be h1 to show product name because product name is the most important part of this content close li and close ul we are going to add another li and it's for rating li inside that use dollar sun curly braces and type rating dot render and here i am going to pass the rating value and rating text value should comes from product dot rating and text is a mix of product num review and in a space reviews put a colon right after text and save the file to format that it's time to import rating Go up, import rating from dot slash components slash rating. Very good. We have created the second li. Let's close this li. And it's time to go for the next one, the price. Li for price. Price column and inside strong tag put dollar dollar product dot price 
The first dollar is for showing dollar sign, and the second one is to get access to JavaScript inside template withdrawals. And close strong tag. Let's put a slash li, and it's time to show description and li for description. Description column and create a div inside this div. Use dollar sign product dot description. Great. Close this li and create indentation like this. So we have created the second column and it's time to go for the last column, which is above details action to show add to cart button. Right after this dev, create another dev and set class to details action. Close this dev and inside that, it's time to create another UL. This UL, this UL contains one, two, or three items. Let's go for them. Li price is gonna be dollar sign dollar dollar product dot price and close li. Second li is for status. Status for a status. I'm going to use a condition if product dot count in stock greater than zero it means that it exists i'm going to wrap it inside in a span span and the class is success because uh, you know it should be green that means that it's a good news in stock and close the span here if it doesn't exist I'm going to show another span inside backtick literal span. This time set class to error. It's not a good news because we are going to say unavailable and close the span. So that's it for status section. Don't forget to close li and close ul. It's time to add the last li. The last one is a button. Button set class of this button to primary. We will implement background color gold for primary buttons. Set caption to add to cart and set an ID for this and set ID to add button. So we just implemented the HTML structure of product screen let's check the result here back to result the image product information and the action but as you see they are in one column what we want to do is to change the css to make them like this convert from this to this so the remaining part of this session is about CSS open style.css. At the end, create a section for product details. Before that, for class content, I'm going to create a padding one rim. By having this, there is a padding around back to results. And very similar to this one. What I'm gonna do is to create details class, set display to flex, to put the stuff in one row, justify content to space between, to create maximum space between them, and set align items to flex start to align them vertically, and set flex wrap to wrap. What happens by using this? If the screen is a small, all columns will be pushed down and there should be in one column in mobile devices. Let's go for details image. Details dash image. What we wanna do for this column is set flex. You know, if we divide the width of this screen to four section, two sections should be image and it should be shrinkable and the width is 60 rem. Let's go for the image inside that, inside this. Set max width to 
60 RAM and also set width to 100%. Let's check the result. You see, this time these two items next to each other. It's time to style these two parts. Let's go for them. For details info, it should be flex. 1, 1, 30 RAM. You know, it's half of 60. And same rules apply to details dash action. Put a dot before that. There should be an S in the details info. And here, here is details action. Let's check the result. Aha, uh -huh. you see, they are going to get close to each other. It's time to add some style to H1 and get rid of bullet points here. To do that, go to style.css and add this code. Details dash info ul and details dash action ul set padding to zero and set list style type to noun the next one should be making heading one small inside details info dot details info heading one set font size to 2 rem and set margin to zero let's check the results save the file aha uh -huh. this time it's small what we are going to do at this step is margin button for li's inside details in fun action dot details info li and dot details info action li create margin button one rem for for details action i'm going to create a border like this and add a very slight background details action set border to 0 0.1 rem and a gray background 380 solid create a border radius to 0 0.5 rem and create a very light gray background f8 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 and create a padding around it padding to one rem great let's check the result aha uh -huh. you know it's this let's add a style to add to cart to add a style i'm going to go at the very top of style.css and right after anchors i'm going to create a section for button and for button i'm going to have this styles set font to 1.6 rem helvetica set padding to 1 rem create a border 0 0.1 rem 80 80 80 solid and set border radius to 0 0.5 rem if hovers happens if you move mouse over the button, I'm going to create a dark border around it. It should be border 0 0.1 rem and the color is darker and solid. Also for button, set cursor to pointer. And it's time to add a style to primary button. Button dot primary. We are going to only change the background color to f0 c0 4 0 it's gold color let's check the result aha uh -huh. so it's time to make us full width to do that add a class right after buttons dot fw full width and set width to a hundred percent and use this class name inside product screen and right before the name of this class check the result and that's it for this lesson in the next lesson we are going to implement add to cart button and create an event handler for it until that lesson bye bye this lesson is gonna be a very short lesson because we are going to add event to add to cart button when user click on add to cart user will be redirected to a new page and the address of this page is slash card 
and then the ID of that card. What we need to do to implement this feature in our local version is to create after render method in the product screen object. Let's go and implement that. Open your VS code and inside the product screen, right before render function, I'm going to define after underline render as a new method. In this method, I'm going to get access to add button and then add event to that. Let's do that together in the after render to get access to an element with its ID. We are going to use document dot get element by ID. The ID is add dash button. I'm going to add event listener and the name of event is click. Put a comma and press enter. And here we are going to define event handler. This event handler accept no parameter. And inside the body of this handler, I'm going to just redirect user to cart screen. Document dot location dot hash so i'm going to only change the hash equal to let's use backtick literal and enter slash cart slash here i'm going to enter the id of product we are going to add to get access to the id of product i need to call parse request url so let's go at the very beginning of after render and define const request equal to parse request url you know if you select the blue one you know i mean the icon next to that is blue and press tab it's gonna import it right here and create round brackets let's use request right here to use that we are going to use dollar sign curly braces and I need the ID of it. So what is happening there in the after render, we get access to add button, add event listener for click. And when click happens on the add to cart button, user will be redirected to the cart screen. Let's see if it works or not. Select a product and click add to cart. As you see, nothing happens. The reason is, we need to call after render in the router function of index.js. Let's do that. Open index.js and inside router function, right after calling a screen.render, I need to call this await a screen dot after render. So by calling this, what happens? Let's check the result. This time, if I click add to cart, it works. You know, it just gets redirected to cart slash one, and one is the ID of this product. But we haven't implemented this page, and you see page not found error here. So what we did in this short lesson is to add events to add to cart button, and when user click on add to cart, user will be redirected to the card screen and for next session we are going to implement that before ending this lesson there is something remains in the product screen and it's about the color of this when it's unavailable we are going to make it red let's go to vs code and in the style that section right after dot fw create dot success it's gonna be a green color color equal to 40F040 and we can make it less green like this and for error class set red it should be C04040 and this time if we check the result you see unavailable is red and if there is an item in the basket it's green in stock that's it for this lesson and 
for next lesson we are going to implement cart screen until that lesson bye bye in this lesson we are going to implement add to cart feature of JS Amazona when you are in the home page and select a product and click add to cart we want to implement this feature when you click add to cart a new item should be added in the shopping cart in this lesson we are not gonna implement the ui of cart screen but what we want to do is to get access to the local storage and add the product to the local storage for next session we will implement the ui and a screen to show list of items in the cart let us start by vs code and here i am going to create a new screen and set the name to cart screen inside the screen new file and set file name to cart screen.js it's time to create an screen object it's super easy const cart screen equal to there are two methods render is gonna be like this and also after render it's gonna be like this at the end we need to export cart screen export default cart screen so let's go to the index.js and use this screen we are going to define a route in the index.js in the routes here create slash cart slash colon id this is the id of the product that need to be added to the shopping cart and the responder is cart a screen and press tab to import cart screen right here we are going to add another route and it's cart itself and also the cart screen is responder for this so when user click on carts in the top right menu it should be redirected to the cart screen in the cart screen and the render method i'm going to return a dev and inside dev just enter cart screen we will implement this in the next lesson wrap them inside the backtick icon and it should be like this let's check the results here when i click on cart i get cart screen here so when users select a product and click add to cart user should be redirected the same screen cart screen what we want to do at this step is to add a product with this id to the cart items in the local storage and for the next lesson we will show them in the screen like this let's go for them open your cart screen and inside the render function based on the plan we just created here we need to parse request url let's do that const request equal to parse request url press tab to import this function from util.js and then it's time to check the value of request if request.id exists it means that user user clicked add to cart button but if it's null it means that user selected cart menu in the header menu so here i need to add this item to the cart first of all i need to get that product from backend so if you remember from the product screen to do that i need to call get product method const product equal to get product and select this one press tab to import get product and pass request.id to get that one because get product is a async function i need to use the wait to access to that product and when you use a wait you need to change the render function to async at this point i have the product information and it's time to call function add to cart this function accept two parameters first of all is the product that i'm going to add to the cart i'm going to pass all information about this product and set quantity for this product to one because by default we are going to add one product to the cart 
The first one is the ID of product. I just set it to product itself and it comes from product underline ID. You know, it's the object that comes from backend. Set name to product name, image to product image and price to product price. Also set content stock to product dot count in a stock. There's a typo, it's stock. And the last one is QTY and by default it's one. It's time to implement add to cart function. Let's go for it. At the very top, before cart screen definition, define const add to cart. And as I said before, the first parameter for, for add to cart is the item we are going to add to the cart. And the second one is force update. And by default, I set it to false. We will use that later, but it's not the case for this session. Don't forget, we need to make it like arrow function. There should be a equal sign here. That's it. So let's go to the body of add to cart function. First of all, we need two methods here that save and retrieve items from local storage. I'm going to use the retrieve one. Let cart items equal to get cart items we need to implement this function it's cart items and let's go for it what i'm gonna do is to create a new file inside rc folder and set file name to local storage.js and inside that i want to define this function get cart item it should be export const get cart items equal to so to get items what i need to do is to call local storage dot get item const cart items equal to local storage dot get item here i need to pass a key it's the key for the item that i'm going to save in the local storage here i use question mark to make sure that there is a value for this key in the local storage. If value exists, I use json.parse to convert local storage, local storage dot get item, cart item, and convert this to JavaScript object because local storage only save data in a string format. But what I want is in JavaScript object. So that's why I'm using json.parse. Otherwise, if it's empty, I just return an empty array because if there is no item in the cart items, it should be an empty array. At the end, only we need to return cart items. Great, we just implemented cart items here. Let's go to cart screen. And at this point, I am going to import that. Get rid of the last S here and select the blue one, press tab to import get cart items from local storage. Good. Here I have cart items and I should check if the item that I'm going to add to the cart item already exists or not. I need to define const exist item equal to here it's time to use find function of array card items dot find x goes to x dot product x dot product is the id of items inside card items and i just compare them with the id of current product and if exist item contain a value it means that we already have this product in the shopping cart what i need to do at this point i need to update cart items like this cart items equal to cart items that map and why i'm using map here because i want to 
replace the product with the same id with the value that i entered as a parameter to the add to cart function so it should be if x dot product equal to exist item dot product then use the item you know in the item the qty field is gonna be updated so by having this line of code if you update the value of content it should be updated in the cart items otherwise put current item in the cart items that's it we have implemented the the true condition of this if let's go for the false spawn else i need to add this item to the cart items let's do that by using this feature of es6 cart item deconstructing arrays object and then concatenate that with the item at the end what we need to do is to call set cart items it's like saving and we need to implement that in the local storage what i need to set in the local storage is the updated cart item let's go in the local storage file and create set cart item export const set cart items it accepts the cart items i need to set and inside the body of this function i call local storage dot set item and the key is cart items you know they should be exactly like the get cart items function and the second parameter is json dot stringify cart items you know as i said before values inside local storage should be in a string format and the cart item is in javascript object i use json.stringify to convert that to a string and save that in the cart item key inside local storage great let's go to card screen and it's time to import that remove last character and select the blue icon here and that's it it just get updated we will go for force update in next lesson but what we did so far is to implement add to cart and what it does is to update local storage based on the item that users selected in the e-commerce website let's go to plan we have done this nine steps in the add to cart item at the end what i'm gonna check is to make sure that get cart items works or not so here i just create another div and then put dollar sign curry braces get cart item and just call the length because it's an array let's see what we have in the result you see i have one let's go to home page select another product and add to cart no the array contains two items so the local storage works perfect if you refresh your page as you see it's still two it means that you just save your cart item if you close your browser and open it again because the data is gonna save inside local storage and also it's smart if that item already exists it's not gonna be added again let's try for product number four go here and here is product number four and add to cart you know it's gonna get three but if you refresh this page and run this algorithm it's not gonna add again and that's because of having this line of code if exist item do not add it just update the cart item great that's it for this lesson what we did together in this lesson is to create a route for cart and cart slash id if there is an id we just defined add to cart function to add that item to the local storage and at the end we created the local storage file that contains two methods to save and retrieve shopping cart items inside our e-commerce website in the next lesson what we want to do is to implement cart screen url so in this lesson we will have a ui like this 
it just lists cart items like this and there should be a button to press it to check out until next lesson bye bye in this lesson we are going to implement cart screen ui as you see in this screen there is shopping cart items and for each item there is an image the title or the name of product and a quantity section but we're not gonna implement this part in this lesson it's gonna be for the next lesson and also the price column we should have subtotal here that shows number of items and also the total price and also we implement proceed to check out when user click on it should be redirected to sign in page very good let's go and implement this ui together go to vs code and here it's time to work on the cart screen click on explorer in the front end src screen double click on cart screen and here it's time to start coding in the render method in the return section what i'm gonna do is to get rid of this code from here and then create a dev for cart set the name to cart close it let's press enter to make it in a new line and close the step if you check the shopping cart there are two columns one column for items and the other one for action let's implement them together the first step set class to cart list and inside this step we are going to list all cart items so it should be a ul set class of this ul to cart list container and close this ul inside this the first li is gonna be shopping cart and price shopping cart and price let's implement that li and inside that create the h3 and set the title to shopping cart and close h3 and create a dev for price and close it and also close the li for next array is gonna be from cart items so let's go here and right before return function define const cart items equal to get cart items we already implement that in the local storage so here i'm going to convert cart items to li's first of all create dollar sign curly braces and here i'm going to check the length of cart items if it's equal to zero i want to show a message that cart is empty let's implement that dev cart is empty and put a dot and create an anchor set anchor to the home page and invite user for shopping go shopping and close that hanger what if there is at least one item in the cart items it's time to render them into the screen it should be cart items dot map i'm going to map each item in the cart item array to allies for each item what i'm gonna return is inside this backtick is li and for each li create a div and set class of this div to cart image and inside this put the image of that item it's gonna be item dot image and close it set alt to item dot name item dot name and close image also we need to close the cart image like this it's time to create cart item if you check the result 
Cart item is this one, you know, the name of product and also a section for quantity and delete button. Let's go for it. Div set class to cart name and inside that create a div for product name. href equal to dollar sign and inside that let's make it like this slash sharp slash product slash and here it's time to show the id of that item item dot product close this anchor and inside that what i'm gonna show is item name the product name so it's time to close this div and create another div for qty quantity for qty quantity I'm going to just use a select, but the details of this select box is gonna be for the next lesson. Create a select and set class of it to QTY select and set its ID to item dot product. Yeah, we need to close this select. Let's only enter a option and set value to one and close it but in next lesson we will get rid of this and replace that with the options but based on the content stock value of this product so we just created the select it's time to create a button and set type of button to button it's gonna be used for delete set class to delete button and set id to for item dot product item dot product close it and the caption should be delete and close the button and close this dev it's time to close the cart name dev like this at the end we need to create another div and this div is gonna show the price of each item cart price and what would be there put a dollar sign and another dollar sign curly braces for item dot price good close this one and also it's time to close the li oops there is an extra closing bracket here and there is no need to have this one close this and there is no need to backtick at all here that's it so change this line for item name in the href to this code exactly and you shouldn't get any error at this line at the end of map function right here we need to put dot join and enter new line by having this when you render LIs in the screen, you will not see commas between LIs. Great. So we just implemented the first column, but if you check the result, let's add an item. It's ugly, you know, the image is too big. Uh, there is a bullet point here, button is big, and quantity QTY is a small, price is not in the right place. We are going to make it like this. But before going for that, let's create this part too. I mean, the section for action that user can proceed to check out. Let's implement that one. And at the end of this lesson, we will go for styling. Great. So after, if you check this dev, this dev is cart list. So next to this one, I'm going to another, another dev and set class of it to cart action to create second column and close it inside that it's time to create the h3 h3 is gonna show sub total sub total has a parentheses and inside that i need to show number of items here is items and uh, here i'm going to calculate number of items I'm going to use reduce function on cart items array. Let's do that dollar sign 
curly braces because I'm going to write JavaScript code here cart items dot reduce reduce accept two parameter accumulator and current item and then it just return accumulator plus current item dot QTY and for reducer the default value for accumulator is zero great let's put a dot here and then it's time to show subtotal put a dollar sign because it's a price another dollar sign curly braces because we are going to write javascript code this time i'm going to use reduce but this time instead of calculating number of items i'm going to calculate subtotal accumulator and current item goes to a plus c dot price multiply by c dot qty and the default value for accumulator is zero that's it for this one it's time to close h3 and create a button this button is for proceed to check out let's set the title to proceed to check out great it's time to add id to check out button and set the class of this to primary because it's gonna be gold and fw because it's gonna be full width that's it for the html part of shopping cart and if you check the result at the end we have all elements subtotal is three items and the sum is correct and also there is a process to check out but in terms of css and styling it's not like this at all let's add some style inside style.css click on explorer and inside src folder double click on the style css go to very end and create a comment for cart and then it's time to start adding the style first of all the parent component set display to flex because we are going to put cart list and cart action next to each other and also set flex wrap to wrap because we are going to make it responsive if the window is a small action part is gonna be pushed down at the end of cart list and set align items to flex start you know as you see it just divide the screen in two section but i'm going to add more space to the shopping cart and keep subtotal in a smaller column like this let's do that cart list is gonna be flex 3 1 60 rem and cart action second column is gonna be flex 1 1 20 rem for cart action we are going to create a background and a border radius background color make it light gray f0 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 and set border radius to half a rem and create a padding like one rem that's it let's check the result it's gonna be like this i'm going to create a space around that inside the cart screen at the very top for this class set content because content if you check content here it has a padding so let's scroll down and here for border make it border radius let's check the result uh -huh, i just create a radius around this like this one great let's go for the inner items it's time to create cart list container it's the ul container container it's the ul set padding to one rem and set list style type to noun good let's go for li's inside cart list container here is the code cart list container li i set display to flex set justify content to space between and set padding button to one rem and margin button to one rem two 
and create a border button slide border button 0 0.1 rem the color should be gray and solid let's check the result you see it just create a border button and items are in one row the next one is gonna be for image chart list container and for image inside that set max width to 10 rem and max height to 10 rem 2 so by having this setting images is gonna be a small like this one it's time to go for this part the first li in the list which is shopping cart and price let's fix their style set cart list container li first child and what i'm gonna do is to set align items to flex end set align items to flex end let's check the result you know it just stick to the bottom great let's go for the next style for cart image i'm going to set flex to one and one for cart name i'm going to add more space eight times bigger than in term of width eight and one and for price cart price make it like image flex is gonna be one and one good for cart price set text align to right because we are going to show them in the right align like this and as you see we are going to get close to the final version let's add some other style to make them exactly like each other here i am going to add cart name they are the immediate dev after cart name class and set padding to one rim also we need to set margin of h3 to zero cart list h3 set margin to zero aha uh -huh. it just work so after that it's time to set cart list button and cart list select i'm going to set the font size to a small font size let's make it 1.3 rem and also we need to set the padding to let's say half a rem uh -huh. here is the result they are very close to each other great in this lesson what we did together is to create cart screen and inside the cart screen we show list of items in the cart and also subtotal right here if we go to the home page and select another product and add it to cart it just show them and it works you know you see the new item is gonna be added to the shopping cart and subtotal shows four items and the total price is correct so for next session we are going to make quantity and delete button works and uh, that's the topic of next lesson until next lesson bye bye in this lesson we are going to finish shopping cart what we're gonna do is to make delete and update quantity work and also when user click on proceed to check out redirect user to sign in page let's go to plan we need to implement after render in the cart screen section and in the after render i want to implement the quantity part here if you check the quantity you will see that there is a static option one we need to update that based on content stock let's get rid of it and this code is gonna convert item.content stock to an array and use map function on that array to, to convert that to select options let's do that i'm using array and inside that pass item dot content stock and get the keys of this array and then at this point i can use map function 
to convert each item in this array to options. So what I need to check item dot qty with x plus one and here x is the index of array and it's zero base so when i plus with one i can compare that with the quantity that already is in this item if they are equal to each other i need to render option selected let's do that option selected and set value to x plus one x plus one so the first option when x is zero is gonna be one like this and close option so the false part if the selected item for qty is not equal to the index of this array i need to render an option and get rid of the selected part wrap it inside backtick great so we just implemented option based on number of item in stock good let's check the result here as you see content stock is six and you see this so let's go for updating quantity if i make it like five i want to update the subtotal here let's go for it in the after render function i want to select select boxes and add change event to them document dot get element by class name and the name of this class is qty select i'm going to save this element inside qty selects let's do that const qty selects equal to this put a semicolon qty selects need to be converted to an array because i am going to add event to all elements inside this object i'm going to use array from to convert that to an array array dot from and pass qty select here and i can use for each to work on each item let's set the name of each item to qty select this one there is no s here and for each item i'm going to add event listener qty select dot add event listener the type of event is change when user change an option what should happen i use e as a event handler here and then use const item equal to let's get cart items from local storage and then use find on this array and inside find i'm going to select the item that equal to qty select x dot product equal to qty select dot id great it's time to add to cart this item add to cart this item i'm going to use all properties inside this item but i'm going to change qty to number you know i'm casting e dot target dot value to number because the value that user selected is an a string i need to convert that to number and set that as a qty and don't forget we need to set the second parameter force update to true great let's go to the add to cart and here there is a force update and if force update is true what i'm gonna do right before set cart item i'm going to check if force update is true re-render cart screen so we need to implement re-render function i'm going to implement that inside util let's go for it open open util.js and here export const re-render 
and it's an async function that accepts the component that need to be rendered and inside this function what I'm gonna do is to set document dot get element by ID main container dot inner HTML equal to await component dot render and also I need to call after render await component dot after render like this it's the re-render function if you check the index.html you can see that there is a main container here and inside util.js in the re-render function I update main container inner HTML by the render method of component. Let's go to cart screen and at this point I get rid of R and select this font import re-render from util.js. For cart screen itself it says that it was used before it was defined. You can get rid of this error because it's not important one like this. Uh-huh. It just removed. For the add to cart function inside unchange event, we need to update force update to true. And inside add to cart function and when the item exists, we need to make sure that force update is true and then we can update cart item. And the last change is gonna be changing the order of set cart items and re-rendering. I'm going to move this one above re-render because first of all I need to update local storage and then re-render it again. Great. Let's check the result. And when I change it to let's say 5, can you see? Subtotal is 8 items. If I change this font to let's say 6, it's going to increase and it's updated. That's it for updating quantity and it's time to go for delete button. When I delete an item, I want to remove that item from shopping cart. Let's go for it. It's very similar to QTY select. So what I'm going to do at this point is to define const delete buttons equal to document dot get element by class name the name of class for delete button is delete button change delete buttons to array array dot from delete buttons delete buttons and for each item inside delete button array i'm going to get delete button and inside this and for each delete button let's add event listener for click when user click on a delete button what should happens I'm going to call remove from cart and pass the ID of the product you are going to delete I'm setting ID and the reason I just set it to ID because if you check the render function for delete button I just created ID attribute for button and I set it to the ID of item that I want to delete so let's just scroll up and it's time to implement remove from cart right after add to cart define const remove from cart. This function accept an ID and inside that I need to update local storage by removing this item from cart items. I'm going to use this set cart items and the parameter that goes to the set cart items is get cart items without the product that I'm going to delete. So it should be get cart items but filter out the item that its product is equal to the id of item i'm gonna delete 
So after updating this, it's time to check the ID of deleted product with the ID of URL parse request URL. If they are equal to each other, I need to redirect the user to the cart screen document dot location dot hash equal to cart screen. Otherwise, if they are not equal to each other, I just re-render the screen cart screen. Great. To get rid of error, what I can do is to click on this lamp and select disable no use before the fine for entire file. It just add this line at the very beginning of this file and there shouldn't be any error next to them. In the filter method, I need to change the condition to if x.product does not equal that ID, then keep that product, otherwise filter it out. Okay, let's test shopping cart. I'm going to add a product here and add another product and let's delete this one and then delete this one so it works and as a last part of this lesson we are going to implement process to check out when user click on it we want to redirect the user to the sign in page it's super simple let's implement that in the after render and here just use this command document dot get element by id this time and the id of checkout button is check out dash button and add event listener and the, and add event listener and the type of event is click and inside that i'm using document dot location dot hash equal to slash sign in Good, let's check the results. When I click on proceed to check out, I get redirected to sign in, but we need to implement that in next lessons. Okay, let's check again what we did in this lesson. We have done shopping cart. So if users select a product like this, user are able to change the number of item in the product. And also user can delete items and when refresh, it's gonna get deleted. That's it for this lesson. Bye-bye. In this lesson, we are going to create user in database. The database we're going to use is MongoDB. And the package we are going to use to connect to MongoDB is Mongoose. At the end of this lesson, you will have an admin user in your database. And you can try sign in with that user or for the next lesson, you will be able to register new user. So let's go for creating admin user using MongoDB. The first step for this lesson is installing MongoDB on your computer. Go to this address docs.mongodb.com slash manual slash administration slash install dash community. And based on your operating system, select one of these links and then when you go in the details page, there should be an instruction for installing MongoDB. Of course, you can use the Mongo Atlas if you like to use cloud database, but I highly suggest you to install a local version of MongoDB. After installing, it's time to go to code and open your terminal. Create a new terminal in the root folder of JS Amazona. You need to install Mongoose. It's like an ORM object relational mapper that make it possible to work with JavaScript object inside your node application and save those JavaScript object as a MongoDB document inside MongoDB collections. After installing this, it's time to connect to MongoDB. To do that, what I'm going to do is to go to server.js. Right before app, I'm going to import mongos from mongos. After importing mongos, it's time to connect to that. mongos.connect. And for connect, 
The first parameter is MongoDB URL. I'm going to use that like this config dot mongodb underline url we will implement config.js later and the second parameter for mongos is a bunch of options we are going to use these options to prevent any warning and errors in the console the first one is use new url parser and set it to true second one is use Unify topology to true and the last one is use create index and set it to true by having these three settings there shouldn't be any error or warning in your console after connecting I'm going to use catch method to catch any errors in connecting to the database inside that I'm just going to console log error dot reason so if there is an error i will get a message in the terminal it's time to go for creating config.js and define mongodb url there click on explorer inside backend right click new file and set file name to config.js what i'm gonna do in this file is install dot env package let's install that open terminal npm install dot env and press enter by using this package you can define environment variable inside a file inside your root folder of js amazona so i right click here create new file and set file name dot env it should be dot env so this file do not have any name and it just has env extension the format to set environment variable for this setting is like this enter variable name like mongo db underline url and put equal sign and then it's time to set a value for this environment variable uh, the default address when you install mongodb is this mongodb colon slash slash localhost slash and it's time to enter your database name i'm going to set the database name to js amazona db that's it let's go for config.js and read this environment because we are going to use that in the server.js to connect to the mongodb inside config.js first of all import dot env port dot env from dot env and after importing dot env you need to call config function of dot env by calling this function dot env read this file and fill process.env with the content inside this file. So here it's time to export config. Export default. I'm going to default an object, and this object contains mongodb underline URL and set it to process.env.mongodb URL process.env.mongodb url is the value that you enter in .env file right here great let's go to server.js and import config.js here i'm going to get rid of g here and press tab and automatically config is gonna be imported right here at this point we want to make sure that we successfully connected to the mongodb to do that after connect and right before dot catch i use then and inside then i define a function and inside that console log connected to mongodb message if you open your console and stop your backend project and run it again you should see this message 
after serve at this address, it says connected to MongoDB. If you have this message by having this code for connecting to MongoDB, it means that you successfully installed your database and connected to database. If you have an error here, like MongoDB network error, it means that there is an error in your installation and you need to follow the document in this address to install it correctly. Let's go back to plan. And at this point, after connecting to MongoDB, it's time to create a model in Mongoose. Go to Explorer, inside backend, create a folder for models. In models, we are going to save information about Amazon users. Create new file, set file name to usermodel.js. And inside user model, I'm going to define an schema. And inside that schema, I'm going to create a model based on that schema. First of all, start by importing Mongoose from Mongoose. And it's time to define user schema const user schema and it's an object from mongoose.schema class mongoose.schema and the first parameter for a schema is a bunch of fields for user for sure the first field is gonna be the name of user and the type of it is a string and I set validation for require to true it means that if you want to save a user and the name of user is empty, you should get an error and it shouldn't be saved inside your database. The second field is email. Email type is a string and it's required and it's an index. By setting to index, it's gonna be faster to get access to an item based on the email in the user collection. And it's unique too. set unique to true. So it's not possible to have two email with same value and go for the next property. It's gonna be password and password type is a string. And also it is required too. What would be the next one? It is admin. Is admin is an important field because by setting is admin as a boolean value we can define admin user and regular user you know the user of e-commerce to buy stuff it's required is true so it cannot be empty or null and the default value for admin user is false so let's get rid of extra curly bracket and save it it's gonna be like this. I just created a user schema and it's time to create a model based on it. After creating a model, a collection with the same name of this model is gonna be created inside the database. To create a model, use this line, const user model equal to mongoose.model you know, there is no new here because we are using model function. It's not a class. And pass two parameter. The first parameter is the name of this collection in the database. And second one is the user schema. We are asking MongoDB to create a collection named user based on this field. Great. Let's export that export default user model that's it about creating a user model and after that it's time to create a route to save a admin user with user model right click on backend new file set file name to user route dot js and what we wanna do in the user route is to define a get method to create a admin user first of all let's import express from express and create router from express const 
router equal to express dot router great let's create a get method from this router router dot get and the address is create admin inside the responder to this address i am going to define an async function that accept request and response and inside that i want to define a try because if there is an error of i want to show an error to user and catch to detect any error inside the try part define a new user based on the user model const user equal to new user the capital user here comes from the user model it's much better to go to user model and set the name to user instead of user model and inside the user let's pass user info name is gonna be admin you can set it to your name email is gonna be admin at sign example.com and password let's set it to jsma zona good i just create an, an instance of this user but i need to call save const created user equal to await user dot save uh, there is a typo in the async here change it to async uh -huh. okay at this point the created user contain all information about this user into the database let's rest.send created user and by running this command we send back the created user information to the front end if there is an error what i need to do is to res status set the status to to 500 because it's an error and set message to error dot message okay it's time to import user get rid of r and as you see in the autocomplete it just recommends user with capital u it's very important it should be capital u and you when you press on it it's gonna be import right here if you don't have this suggestion that just type this import user from dot slash models slash user model great it's time to use user route inside server.js what i'm gonna do first of all i'm going to rename that to user router because it's user router and rename this one here and at the end export default user router we are good to go to rename this to user router like this and create a folder in backend set folder name to routers and move user router inside routers folder and click on move so the folder structure is like this in the back end there is a model inside model there is user model and there is a routers and inside that there is user router so save all files and go to server.js and write before slash api slash product i'm going to use user router it's gonna be like this app dot use the first parameter for use is the api path slash api slash users and the second one is user router it should be user select this one because it's gonna automatically import that for you and press tab make sure at the very beginning of your server.js you just imported user router right here it's time to test first of all open your terminal and make sure you do not have any error in the backend side before testing create admin go to user router and for admin user i'm going to set is admin to true because it's admin user and now it's time to test your create admin open your chrome http column slash slash local host column 5000 slash api slash users slash create admin 
and press enter. You should get this result. If it's not formatted, you need to install JSON Viewer, this one from Chrome extension and it just make your JSON content beautiful. If you get any error, it means that you didn't install your MongoDB correctly or there is an error in your backend code. Great, that's it for this lesson. What we did in this lesson is connecting to MongoDB database using .env to define env environment variable using environment variable and what it does is to keep your project safe because MongoDB URL it's a secure data that you don't like to share with others through sharing your source code and that's why we are using this and we're not gonna make .env part of our git repository to share that with others and also we just created user model and a router to create admin user for next lesson we are going to go for designing sign in a screen ui and then implement sign in in our e-commerce website until that lesson bye bye in this lesson we are going to implement sign in a screen if you check the final version of JSM Zona and click on sign in you will have form like this and you can enter your email address and click on sign in also there is a link for new user to create a new account in this lesson we're gonna build sign in form and it's just about the ui and styling and for next lesson we will implement the sign in button to send requests to the server to authenticate user let's get to code open VS code and here is the plan create sign in a screen render email and password fields and then style them click on explorer and inside front end src screen it's time to add sign in a screen new file set file name to sign in a screen.js inside this screen we are going to create render method const sign in a screen equal to an object that contains two functions the first one is after render and second one is the render itself inside render function i'm going to return a form but first of all let's create a container for that form dev and set class to for container and close it inside form container let's create a form and set id of this form to sign in form we will get access to that in the after rendered method to put an event for submit close it inside form i'm going to have a bunch of fields for example email password and button let's create a ul and set class of this ul to form items and close it the first item in the form is sign in title create h1 and set the title of this form to sign dash in and close it and close the li the next item should be email because we are going to get user email li put a label set label for email we need to create an id for the input box with email and email close the label after it it's time to create an input the type of input is email and the name of it is email2 and the id is email close it good it's time to go for the next one the next one is for sure password create label and set for to password and set it to password close label and create input set type of input to password name to password and id to password and close it 
closed ally. So we just created email and password and it's time to go for a button, the sign in button. Ally, inside that put a button, set type to submit and set class of it to primary. We're gonna create a primary button to create gold background for it. Sign, sign and and close the button great close ally and it's time to create a link for new user to create a new account so ally inside ally create a div inside div ask user new user question mark and if they are new there should be a link and the link is register page and the title of this link should be create your account. Close the anchor and close the div and close the li. Great. We just implemented the render function for signing and it's time to export that. Export default sign in a screen. As you see, we just created sign in a screen and it's time to go to index.js to use that in the route section we're gonna add slash sign in to sign in a screen select this one press tab to import it automatically after that it's time to check the result let's open here and click on sign in you see this form but it's not exactly like what we want to have let's add some style to convert this form to this one go to code and open style.css and at the very end of this style put a comment for form the first style is for form container and it should be display flex because we are going to put a box in the center of a screen vertically and horizontally justify content center and align items to center too also set height to full height 100 percent let's see what we have aha uh -huh. you see this time the form is gonna be centered vertically and horizontally let's go for the next style it's time to add a style for form items ul form items dot for items equal to set display to flex because we are going to put label and set flex direction to column we're gonna put label and input box in separate lines set width to let's say 32 rem and create a padding around it set it like 2 rem and it's time to create a border around that the width of border is gonna be 1 pixel and the color is gray and the style is solid and a border radius like 0 0.5 rem the last style is list the style type to noun we're not gonna have bullet point for this ul let's check the result aha uh -huh. that's it we're gonna get close to the final style okay let's go for next for li's inside form items we're gonna set display to flex and set flex direction to column set margin button to one rim and margin top to one rim two we're gonna Put a space between items let's check the result aha uh -huh. they are very close to each other and it's time to make this a bit small dot form container h1 set font size 2.5 rem and it's time to style input boxes let's go for them at the very top of the style.css yeah right here for button as you see uh, we have a style for button i'm going to make input like button 
put input comma and also for hover input column hover comma but if you check there is a cursor to pointer we're not gonna have it for input cut it from here and above that put button and set cursor to pointer only for button let's check the result good compare the final one with this one so close to each other let's fix create your account link if you go to sign in a screen and in the h ref i need to put r here h ref and then it should work if you click on it you will be redirected to register a screen that we will implement that later great in this lesson we implemented the ui of sign in a screen and for next lesson we want to attach an event to sign in when user click on it the user and password should be sent to backend to authenticate and a response will be given to the user until that lesson bye bye in this lesson we are going to implement the backend api for sign in in the final version of JSM Zona, when you enter your email and password, let's say I enter a wrong one, in the network section and SHR selected, when I click on sign in, as you see, I'm getting this API. I'm sending this API request to slash user slash sign in, and it's the response that I get, invalid user or password. And if I enter the right user and password and sign in, I will be redirected to home page. But the important part is this API request as a post method, and the response is 200. And if you check, what I pass is email and password through request payload. And for the result, I'm getting all information about this user and an extra field, which is token. And this token is generated by JSON Web Token. And I need that for next request. So in this lesson, we are working only on backend side. So there is nothing on the front end. And in the next session, we will connect the backend and front end together. Great. Let's get coding. Open your VS Code. And while your front end and back end is running, it's time to go to back end folder right here. And inside the routes, select user router. I'm going to add a new API and it's going to be a post API, you know, HTTP post request. User router dot post the address is sign in and here i'm using rec and res at this point i'm going to send a request to the database to get a user with this email and password so const sign in user equal to await here i'm going to get access to user model from mongoose and call find one function on it find one accept an object and this object is like a filter email should be uh, to get access to the front end data you know on the body section of the http request that's sent by front end data i need to type this rec dot body and after that i can enter the name of field let's say email so in the front end side i need to fill the email in the body section of my request and by setting that i can read that right here the second filter is password and it should be like rec.body.password great at this point i have sign in user but because i'm using await this function should be async here is time to check the signed in user. First of all, let's implement the, a negative scenario. If signed user doesn't exist, exclamation mark, 
sign in user what should i return to the front end for sure i need to set the status to 401 you know it's unauthenticated or unauthorized press that status 401 and send here i'm sending a message message equal to invalid email or password great uh, we just implemented the bad scenario here for the good scenario we will go for that later in this lesson at this point i need to install body parser to be able to read the body section of request to do that open your terminal a new window and npm install body dash parser it's a middleware by express and by having this you can read the content in the body section of a request so it's time to use that click on server at the very top of this screen it's time to import body parser from body parser and right after creating app let's say right after course app.use body parser.json we are using json because the data that i'm going to send as a body is in json format great at this point we are ready to test our api for invalid user and password you need to install postman to test api so go to postman.com and click on download button and follow the instruction to have postman on your computer after that run postman i just run it right here click here on plus icon and for creating a new request click on post because we are sending post request and the address should be http colon slash slash local host 5000 slash api slash users slash sign in in the body section of this request set select raw and the text should be json and inside that create curry braces inside that enter email you know put that in double quote let's say admin at sign example.com and I'm going to enter a wrong password. Password is JS Amazona, but I just enter a one to enter a wrong one. Let's test it. Click on send. What do you get? Invalid user or password. And what's the status? 401 unauthorized. Great. We successfully tested our sign in endpoint for invalid user and password. I'm going to install Express Async Handler at this point because when there is an error in our application which is unhandled error, it stops running our application and do not send back correct error message to the user. So at this point, I'm going to install Express Async Handler. Open your terminal, npm install express dash async dash handler and press enter after installing this we need to import that in the user router so let's go to user router as the very top import express async handler from express async handler so after importing express async handler it's time to go to your async function and wrap your whole responder to this so type this create a round bracket open in round bracket and at the very end put a closing one so by having this you wrapped responder function to this endpoint inside express async handler do the same for create admin like this great so all functions are wrapped in express async handler when you have express async handler 
At this point, you need to go to server.js at the very end, right before app.lesson. You need to add this code to handle all errors in your express instance, app.use. There are four parameters, error, request, response, and next. And inside this function, I'm going to check const status equal to if error dot name exists and error dot name equal to validation error what i'm gonna send back is error code 400 it means that user entered something wrong and otherwise 500 it means that server has a problem so res.status should be the status code and what I want to send is the message of error. It should be error.message. By using this, all errors in our express will be handled in this function. Let's go to plan. We are in this step, testing invalid user and password, and it's time to go for entering correct user and password. If you remember from the very beginning of this lesson, we just generated a token. So we need to generate a token with JSON web token. Let's install that. Open your terminal again. NPM install JSON web token. By using JSON web token, you can create a token based on your user info. And for next request, you can use that to authenticate your request. Go to user router. And inside that, for sign in, the else part. If sign in user exists, I need to rest.send the data that I'm going to enter. ID should be sign in ID. Name should be signed user name. Email will be sign in user dot email. Is admin is gonna be sign in user is admin. And the last one is token. And here it's time to generate a token. Generate token. And the parameter is sign in user because we are going to generate token based on the information of this user. Generate token should be in util.js. Right click on backend, new file, and set file name to util.js. And inside that, export const generate token equal to user and inside this i'm going to call jwt return jwt it stands for json web token and call sign method of it the parameter that i'm going to pass is the id should be user on the line id Second one is name, should be user dot name. Email should be user dot email. And the last one is, is admin is gonna be user dot is admin. Sign accept to parameter. Second parameter is a master password, is JSON web token secret. Let's introduce that like this config.jwt underline secret it should be a secret string and by using this a hacker can decrypt your uh, token let's fix this typo here uh-huh put a colon and it's time to define jw secret inside config first of all get rid of g and type it again and press here to import config and also it's time to import JWT import JWT from JSON web token. Uh, at this point, I need to go to config and define this. Open config.js and after MongoDB URL, JWT secret should be process.env. JWT secret and open your env file. And here create JWT secret and enter a secret 
a string, something secret, whatever you like. It's the master key to encrypt your token and uh, don't forget it should be in a safe place because a hacker can use that to decrypt your token. Let's check what we did so far. Here it's time to import generate token, get rid of n and type it and press this to import it right here from util.js and let's check util.js everything seems right and config.js let's check the result send correct password and let's see what we have aha uh -huh, that's it we have all information about this user from database and also we have a token from json web token by using this token we can authenticate next request for this user Let's review what we did together. First of all, we install body parser, async handler, and JSON web token. And then we create a JSON secret in the config. We updated server.js to use body parser.json. And also we handled all errors in our Express application. Also, in the util.js, we create a generate token based on JSON web token. And at the end, we defined a router for sign in. And this router enabled us to sign in user. Great. We just implemented all steps are sign in, a screen backend lesson. And for next lesson, we are going to connect the sign in screen UI and sign in screen backend in sign in a screen action lesson until that lesson bye bye in this lesson we are going to complete sign in a screen when you click on sign in and enter a wrong password you should get an alert invalid user or password and when you sign in successfully the header should be your name and card let's implement that open your vs code and go to sign in a screen in this screen, for after render, we are going to attach an event to sign in form on submit. Let's implement that document dot get element by ID. The ID of this form is sign in form and press enter dot add event listener. The type of event is submit and the listener is an async function that accepts event as a parameter and as a first line of this event handler we are going to call e.prevent default by calling this line after clicking on submit button this form will not refresh and post back to the server and it's time to call sign in api const data equal to await sign in and the data that I'm going to pass to the front end is email and password. The email comes from document.getElementById and the ID is email.value for password. It's going to be like this, password.value. And when I call sign in, a request should be sent to the server. And after that, if data dot error i need to show an alert and inside alert the message of alert should be data dot error otherwise i redirect user to home page document dot location dot hash is gonna be slash and the slash is home page let's go for implementing sign in open explorer go to api and at the very end, based on this one, we are going to create a sign-in function. Export const sign-in equal to async two parameter email and password. And inside the body of this function, let's use try catch. And the catch part is error. If there is an error, show that error in the console. And also return error equal to error dot 
response.data.message if it doesn't exist, error.message is enough. That's it for the catch part and for the try part. First of all, define const response equal to await Axios. And for Axios, the URL should be like this. API URL slash API slash users slash sign in second parameter is method the method is post the next one is header and for header set content type to application json content type to application json and after header set data that we're gonna send back to the server like this email and password great at this point we just created the response and it's time to check the response if response.status text response.status text doesn't equal to capital ok i should throw an error new error and the message is response.data.message get rid of extra s here and that's it if everything is okay return response.data that's it we just implemented the sign in function here and it's time to go to sign in a screen and here we need to import that get rid of n type it again and press tab to import sign in very good let's check the results open your browser open your inspector and go to network and click on sign in as you see this message pop up and let's check the body aha uh -huh, it's invalid data let's enter the valid one admin at sign example.com and enter js amazona js amazona and click on sign in you see you will be redirected to the home screen if you check the sign in in the request section the request payload is email and password they are correct and in the preview section you are getting email is admin name and a token so the next step is saving user information after successful login in the else part before redirecting user to the home page i'm going to set user info based on the data we need to save user info in the local storage. So let's implement this function in the local storage. Open local storage and export const set user info. We are going to get data from user and we're gonna set default value for them. Let's say for ID default is empty string. For name default is empty again email empty password empty token empty and for is admin let's set it to default false in the body of this function set local storage dot set item for user info to json dot stringify this values id name email password token and is admin great here is the body of set user info for sure we need to get user info too let's implement get user info export const get user info and this function get user info from local storage return local storage dot get item user info is the key of get item uh, we need to check that if it exists return json parse because we're not gonna send back a string as a user info it should be a javascript object so we need to convert the string value inside get item of local storage using json dot parse local storage dot get item user info 
If it doesn't exist, let's enter default name to empty string, email to empty string, and also password to empty string too. Good. In the sign in screen and in the render section, you can check if get user info press tab to import that right here dot name exists then there is no need to show this form we should redirect user to the home page because when user signed in there is no need to sign in again document dot location dot hash should be slash the home page also don't forget here in the after render set user info get rid of last o type it again and select this font to import set user info in the sign in screen save the file and test them at this point i just logged in so if i click on sign in you see i redirected to the home page as a last step for this lesson i'm going to show user name when user sign in what we need to do is to create a component inside component folder and set the name of it to header.js and create a structure of component const header equal to an object and this object contains render and after render. Let's put fat arrow here and export default header in the render part let's return i'm going to go to index.html and move header content right here cut it from here and paste it here so how can i show header first of all save index.html and set the id of this header to header container and then go to index.js and in the router function at this point define const header equal to document.get element by id header container and set header.inner html equal to await header you know press tab to import header from component folder right here and put a dot render also you need to call await header dot after render by having this change if you check the result you will not see any change in the ui we just moved the header section to an independent component so in the header.js we can control how menu shows in the screen let's do that in the render function const name equal to get user info press tab to import user info from local storage and then you can check name to find if user logged in or not you know as you see here there is a dev here if user is a guest user i just need to show sign in so let's use that dollar sign name if it exists render this one anchor href to slash sharp slash profile and here i need to enter username dollar sign name and close anchor otherwise cut this from here put backtick and paste it right here let's check the result aha uh -huh. here you see this is the name of user and if i click on it i will be redirected to profile screen let's log out to log out you need to remove local storage click here select cookie select local host remove and click ok and refresh now your local storage deleted and you see sign in here let's review what we did for this lesson first of all we just updated the index.html and 
created an independent header component inside header.js and based on the user logged in or user is a guest user we show sign in or username in the header menu also in the local storage we defined two method to set user info or to save user info inside local storage and read user info from there also in the sign in screen we created after render and inside that we attached an event to submit sign in for and also in the api.js we created sign in function to send an ajax request to the server to authenticate user at the end if user enter correct user and password we redirect user to home page otherwise we show an alert in the next lesson we are going to create progress bar progress indicator when we are sending a request we need to show an overlay to inform that user should wait for the result and also instead of having you know the regular alert component of browser we are going to use an advanced font that we just create together and it's much better and more consistent with the e-commerce website until that lesson bye bye in this lesson we are going to implement progress indicator and custom alert box if you go to the final version of js amazona and select the product you see there is a loading when I click on sign in and enter user and password and click on sign in, you see a loading message. Also, if you enter a wrong user and password like this and click on sign in, you will get a custom message box like this. And after press OK, you can continue and enter the correct one. Let's implement a loading indicator or progress indicator and a custom alert message let's get to coding and here is the plan first of all create overlay loading dev in index.html open index.html in the front end folder and right after body create this dev dev set class to overlay set id to loading dash overlay and set content to loading triple dot next step we need to style loading open style.css and write after button dot primary overlay and here is the style to create a full screen overlay set display to noun by default we're not gonna show that set position to fixed because by a scroll we do not change the position of it set z index to a large number like a thousand we're gonna put that on above other stuff and set top to zero left to zero width to a hundred percent and height to a hundred percent too and it's time to create a transparent background background color should be rgba red green blue and uh, an alpha like 16 comma 16 comma 16 and transparent 50 percent also we need to create an active overlay overlay dot active and it's gonna be like display flex justify content center because we are going to show the loading in the center of a screen and align items to center two and set color to white so when we add active to an overlay display from none is gonna be changed to flex and it's up here on the screen let's follow the plan here it's time to create show loading function in the util.js open your util.js inside the front end and create show loading and hide loading function here export show loading equal to first select loading overlay document 
dot get element by id loading dash overlay and we are gonna add to the class list active and after export there should be const this is the show loading let's duplicate that and make that hide loading and instead of add active remove active great let's go back to plan and here it's time to use this in the sign in screen open sign in screen and right before sign in api call show loading press tab to import it here and after that hide it let's check that click sign in and here i'm entering wrong one and click on sign in loading message appears right here what i'm gonna do at this point is to use show loading on other pages let's say when i refresh this and i'm sending an ajax request to server i want to show a loading message there let's implement that index.js right here and at the very beginning of router function call show loading and at the end of this function call hide loading and in the home screen right after calling this you need to call hide loading and before that call show loading so before and after ajax request you need to have show loading and hide loading let's check that uh-huh you know if i refresh it's gonna be like this when i go to details screen i have this back to result click and you see it just work let's sign in and it works perfect also for the details page i am going to use that in the product screen and in the render method i'm gonna use show loading before ajax request and hide loading after that let's check you see we need to create an overlay message in the index.html go to index.html and right after loading overlay it's time to create message overlay it's similar to this i just duplicate that create a div and set class of div to overlay and set id to message dash overlay and close it go to util.js and here we are going to define show message at the very end of it export const show message equal to it accept two parameter the message that i'm going to show and the callback function that i'm going to call after press ok in the uh, you know message box set document dot get element by id message dash overlay dot inner html to this create a div inside that div create another div and set id of this div to message dash overlay dash content and put message right here close the div and create a button set id of this button to message dash overlay dash close button and just put ok and close button also close the div and we are going to add class active document dot get elements by id message overlay dot class list dot add active and the last comment should be event listener for close button document dot get element by id message dash overlay dash close button dot add event listener on click what we're gonna do is to remove that class 
document.getElementById and the ID is message overlay classlist.remove active because when user click on OK button, the overlay should remove. And here I check callback. If callback exists, call it. That's it. Here is the body of show message function. Let's go and use that in the sign in screen. Open sign in screen and instead of alert, I'm going to use show message. Press tab to import that. And here is data.error. And I don't have any callback after, you know, clicking OK. Let's test it. Click on sign in and enter wrong password and click on sign in. I'm getting invalid user or password. Let's add some style to this. Go to style.css and write after overlay.active. I'm going to add this style. Overlay, direct div, set background color to white, set color to black, set border radius to half a rem, set display flex, and flex direction to column. Make justify content space around. And the last one set max width to 40 rem. Also for dot overlay direct dev and direct any item, any tag, create a margin and set margin to 2 rem. By having this, let's enter a wrong password and click on sign in. Aha, uh -huh. we are getting this alert message instead of regular and default alert of browser. If you press OK, it's gonna remove. OK, let's review what we did in this lesson. First of all, in the index.html, we created two overlay to show loading message and show custom message to the user. We updated the style of them to make them full screen and transparent. In the index.js, in the router method, before any process, we show loading and after them, hide that. In the util.js, we created show loading, hide loading, and also show message function. In the home screen, before sending an Ajax request, we called show loading and after that we hide that also in the product screen we did that exactly and in the sign in screen we use that for send the sign in message show loading before that and if there is an error we use show message to show custom alert to the user okay that's it for this lesson and for next lesson we are going to go for register screen until that lesson bye bye in this lesson, we are going to implement register screen. When user click on sign in and uh, user doesn't have an account in our website, click on create your account. In this lesson, we are going to implement a form like this to register a new user and create a backend API to make a user in the database and then we direct user to the home page to show username in the header menu. Let's get to code, open your VS code and go to a screen folder. And here, instead of creating register a screen new file, I am going to duplicate sign in a screen. Throughout this lesson, we are going to copy stuff from sign in a screen because register and sign in process are very similar to each other and we're not gonna duplicate ourselves. So copy and paste sign in a screen and rename that to register a screen like this. Press enter and here we are in the register screen. Rename sign in to register. So I press control F and enable match case. Click here to open it for replace box and enter register. As you see, four item found replace all. This time use capital sign in. There are three item here and 
use capital register and replace that. So by using this feature of VS Code, we rename all sign in to register with respect to match case. Next step, scroll down to the render section of register screen. And before getting email, we are going to get name. I'm going to duplicate this and rename that to name. Name, name, name and name. And here is capital name. And instead of sign in, it should be create account. For password, duplicate password section because we are going to get reenter password and make it re password. But there is no need to change the type. At the end, the button is register and the question right here it should be already have an account question mark and redirect user to sign in page and rename this to sign in I scroll up in the after render for registering a new user i need name of user too duplicate email line and rename that to name and by having this line we get the name of user and save it in the database notice that in this lesson you have to watch the sign-in lesson because for sign-in details video i explain each line of this code and here we're not gonna duplicate ourselves we are using the knowledge of sign-in and just implement register screen and we're not going to explain each line because in the sign in lesson we explained all of them let's go to api and create register click on api and here as you see we have sign in screen again i'm going to duplicate sign in and rename that to register register here and register here also I want to get the name of user at this point and for data that I'm sending back to server I pass the name of user to save it and it's time to go to index.js to add register screen to list of routes open index.js and right after sign in create register and set it to register screen press tab to import that great we have done the front end part and we should be able to see register let's check that go to home page click on sign in Click on create your account. Uh -huh. As you see, they are very similar to each other, but we need to implement the backend part of it. Let's go for it. Open your user route in the backend folder routers, user routers. And here there is a post method for sign in. Let's duplicate the sign in function and rename that to register function uh, we're not gonna looking for database for a user with this user or password what we need to do at this point is to create a new user let's get rid of it const user equal to new user and what I'm going to pass to this object, name, email, and password, name equal to rec.body.name. If you remember from the connect to MongoDB, you know that by having rec.body, we can get access to the data that front end sent to the backend. Same as for email and password. 
rename that to email and password. It's time to create this user. Const created user equal to await user dot save. It's time to check if created user doesn't exist. It means there is an error. So I need to send back an error and the error is invalid user data. It means that user entered wrong data for this information. If everything goes well, I just copy created user and paste them with this one. And I just send the information about this new user to the front end. Let's go and check that. Open here and open your inspector. Keep your network and XHR open and enter user information. Test, test at example.com. Test, test and click on register. The new user created successfully and you just redirect it to the home page. And in the header menu, you can see the new user name. If you check the register API, you can see that in the header section, we are passing email name and password and the backend send back the ID of user in the database, the token to authenticate that user, and name, email, and is admin. So we successfully created register screen and also we implemented the backend API for registration and everything works perfect. Let's check if we enter wrong data. Here I'm going to click here cookie and remove local host and then refresh to be a sign out user and click on create account, open your terminal, and here do not enter data for let's say name and click on register. You see, user validation failed. Path name is required. So by having this custom alert, if there is a validation error, we send back status 400 and display the error message for user. That's why you are getting 400 bad requests and you just get the error message. The register screen shows validations error to the user. In the next lesson, we are going to implement profile page and make it possible to sign out for user. Until that lesson, bye-bye. In this lesson, we are going to implement profile screen. When user click on their name, a screen like this, should pop up and in the user profile section user should be able to see their info and also update information there is a logout button to remove user information from this computer and uh, logout user from the system uh, showing list of orders is the topic of next lessons and here we are going to focus on this box Let's create that together. Go to your VS code. And like previous lesson, we're not gonna duplicate ourselves. Profile screen is very similar to register screen. So we are going to duplicate that and rename stuff instead of building them from scratch. If you don't see the sign in screen lessons, I highly suggest you to watch them. And by watching them, you will understand each line of code in the register and profile screen. Copy and paste, register screen and rename that to profile screen. Inside that, I'm going to rename a register to profile. And also at the end, it should be profile 
There is no need to ask question for sign in, get rid of it. And instead of register button, update button. Good. Scroll up. And what we are going to do at this step is to get user info from local storage. So in the render method, here we have this line of code to check if user.name exists, redirect user to the home page. But in the profile page, we need to check if user is not logged in, redirect that to the home page. Let's do that. I'm defining name and email from get user info. If name does not exist, it means that user shouldn't see this screen and should be redirected to home page. Rename create account to user profile. And here we are going to show user name inside the input box for name. Set value to dollar sign curly braces name. It's the name that we are getting from local storage. For email, it's going to be like this. Value dollar sign curly braces email. And for password, we're not going to pass password. And there is no need to have two password here. That's it for the form. Let's go to index.js and add profile screen to list of routes. Click Explorer, open index.js, scroll up at this point, and slash profile should be profile screen. Select this one to import profile screen right here. Also, there is an error in the home page uh, when we call a screen dot after render, some screen doesn't have after render. So here I'm going to have an if condition. If a screen that after render exists, then call await a screen that after render. By having this line, there shouldn't be any error in your Chrome Dev Tools. Let's check the results. Here, refresh and click on sign in. Here is the data for sign in and after sign in and clicking on your name, you see it's user profile. When you click on update, nothing happens. We need to implement updates right here. Let's get to code and inside the profile screen. At this point, it's register form. Let's rename that to profile form right here and here. And there shouldn't be a register method here. The method that we're going to use to update the profile is update. Let's go and implement update function. Copy this, paste it right here in the API. Go to API and duplicate register method in the API. Rename that to update. At this point, we need to send an authorized request to the server. Let's rename register to the ID of current user, dollar sign, curly braces, ID. And what's the source of this ID? Let's get it right here. Const ID and token from get user info. Press tab to import get user info from local storage at this point. So by getting ID, I'm sending an update request to this URL slash API slash user and slash ID of the user. So we need to change method from post to put because post is for creating a new resource and put is for updating a new resource. In the header section, I'm going to put authorization 
because it's an authorized URL and everyone cannot update other users info. Authorization equal to barrier, put an space, put a plus and send the token right here. If you press control S, it's going to convert that to the backtick format. So barrier and a space and the token should be passed as an authorization field of header of this request. And here is the data that I'm passing to the backend. And if there is an error, I show that error. Otherwise, I send back the data. Let's check the profile screen right here. And I just save that in the API. It's update and here there shouldn't be any error for updates. Good. It's time to go to backend and implement update profile API. What we need to do at this point is to go to user router inside router folder of backend. Open it and I'm going to duplicate user router dot post and convert that to put because it's a update resource and the path of this URL should be colon ID and the ID is the ID of user that we need to update. At this point, I don't like to create a new user so let's get rid of them and what i'm gonna do is to get this user from database await user dot find by id find by id equal to rec dot params dot id and rec dot params dot id is the value that user insert in this part of url if user doesn't exist i need to send 404 error because the resource doesn't found and the message should be user not found otherwise if user found what i need to do is to update user info set user dot name equal to rec dot body dot name if it doesn't exist, use the current value of username in the database and duplicate this algorithm for email and password. Email, email, and email, password, password, and password. So if user enter empty password, it should use the current password of user and save it into the database. At the end, I need to call user.save const updated user equal to await user.save and pass this information to the front end and we need to generate a new token based on it. Let's check the result. Open your terminal here and let's rename admin to my name like Basir and click on update. You see my name is changed. And if you check the network section, XHR part, and click on this one, you can see the URL is slash API slash users, the user ID, and the data that I pass to server is email, name, and password. And the result that's sent back by server is the new information of this user. There is a problem in this API, and it's and the problem is that it's not authenticated. You know, if someone else 
send a request, it's going to update other user information. What we're going to do to prevent this security issue is to define a middleware, a express middleware, an express middleware to fix that. Let's do that. Go to code and go to util.js in the backend and create this method. Const is auth. It's a middleware. Middleware accept three parameter: request, response, and next. We have worked with request and response, and the next means that when everything goes well, you can call next, and by calling next, uh, the middleware stopped, and the next middleware or the handler will uh, follow processing that request. Inside that, I'm going to read headers.authorization const barrier token equal to rec.headers.authorization barrier token doesn't exist. If it doesn't exist, it's empty. I should return an error res dot status 401 dot send and the message is gonna be token is not supplied else part if token exists I need to get the token part because barrier token contains barrier space token I need I need to get rid of the barrier space const token equal to barrier token dot slice seven and the length of barrier token so I just cut from the seven index of barrier token to get rid of barrier space part of the token and just get only the token at this point so I need to call JWT. Let's import that, you know, like this. Press tab to import JWT and call verify. Verify accept token and JWT secret config dot JWT secret. And the third parameter is callback that contain error and data. If there is an error, it means that the token format is incorrect. If error res.status401 send message and put message invalid token. Otherwise, everything is okay. Request dot user fill with data what is data here the data is decoded token and the decoded token is user information like username email is admin and etc and after that call next and what is next in this line by calling next it means that everything in this middleware is okay and the next handler should start processing the request. Let's export is off right here. Export. And then go to user router. And in the put method for updating profile, right after the ID, put this middleware is off. And we need to import that right here from util.js is off great let's go back to this function and uh, now if we send requests without providing token we should get an error here if i open terminal and click here and change it to basir one and then update what does it say? 
token is not valid. So token exists, but it's not valid. Let's log out. Cookie. Remove. Okay. And refresh. I will be redirected to home page because it's a private area. Sign in. Sign in. And click here. And enter password for. And click on update. I'm getting token. Let's fix this issue. Aha, there is a typo here. It should be headers. It should be headers. Let's check result. Click update. You see? This time, it just work. And if you check the request headers, you can see that the authorization work like this. So by using is off right here, and use that inside the user router that put for updating profile. We make sure that only the owner of an account can update their information. Let's go for the last part of this lesson, which is implementing sign out. Go to profile screen and at the very end, right after update, create a new button, set the button type to button and set the ID of it to sign out button and update should be sign out change the primary there is no need to be primary at all and go to after render to add an event to this button at the very top of after render document dot get element by id sign out dash button add event listener for click and what i'm gonna do is clear user information from local storage clear user we need to implement this and redirect user to home page. Set hash to home page. Good. Let's go for clear user. Inside local storage, we are going to implement that. Go to there. And right after set info, create export const clear user. In this function, what we need to do is to local storage dot remove item user info. That's it. Save the profile. Make sure that you have it right here, the clear user, and check the result. Click on your name, click on sign out. You see, this time it's sign in. So sign out work. So let's test again. Click on sign in, sign in, and click on your name, click on sign out. Let's check updating profile, sign in, click on your profile, change your name, let's say to add a number next to that, click update. You see, your name changed right here, and if you refresh, it still has your name. That's it for this lesson. Let's review what we did together. First of all, in the util.js, we created is off in the backend to authenticate user request by barrier token validation. After that, in the user router, we defined a new route for updating profile and before starting processing that request, we make sure that is off is validated and user is authenticated to do this request. And then inside the update, first of all, we get the user by its ID. And if it doesn't exist, returns an error. Otherwise, we update the user information. For fails that user do, do not fail, we pass the database value for them to update. In the API part, we defined a new function for updating user profile 
and here we send a request to the backend part to update user information. In the index.js, we added a new screen for profile and user insert slash profile should be redirected to profile screen. And in the profile screen, which is a new screen in this lesson, we show information about the user and make it possible for user to update their info or log out from a screen. As a last part of this lesson, we created a new method in the local storage and we clear user info when user click on sign out button. That's it for this lesson. And for next lesson, we are going to continue check out Vizar because at this point we have all information about the user that we are going to put an order for them and it's time to follow the checkout wizard. Until that lesson, bye.